your accent. Okay. Welcome to the Ben Mala podcast, where Ben Mala and the crew are going to answer your real estate questions. If you'd like to submit your question, go to benmala.com slash shop. You can get a fast pass that will get you the call on the show. Aaron is also going to read super chats, and uh, Ben and the crew are going to answer them. So, Ben, what's the big big show coming up? Listen, let me tell you something. Forget the show for right now. Don't, don't forget about it, but I've got sitting next to me, okay, the, you guys got it. You don't get it. You have an opportunity to meet somebody who's the real fucking deal, okay? This is the guy. I met him online in about 2003 or two or something through LoopNet. Yep. All right? I met him. I come down here. And he opens up the fucking floodgates to me. All right? That's what he did to me in Florida. This is the guy that set my ass up in Florida. All right? And I can't count the number of fucking deals we did together. All right? And you guys have the honor and pleasure of meeting him. So, John Burpee's here. Um, I'm sorry. I know you changed brands recently. What's the name of your firm? John Burpee and Associates. John Burpee. And he has associates. Pretty simple. All right? <laughs> But he keeps the associates in their place. <laughs> All right. He's the big head honcho. Oh, his wife really is. I know her. That's the truth. But um, we all have that issue. So welcome, John. Thanks for coming. I really appreciate you. You're a busy guy. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. And listen, you better hurry up and get your tickets, okay? Because we sold out the last time we had him in Fort Lauderdale. Saturday night was sold out. Brenda had to turn people away, and they were pissed. But luckily, I had a show the next day. I'm not doing a show the next day because it kicked my ass. So you better hurry up. Go book your room. If you book two tickets, the room only ends up costing you 50 bucks if you go to the room package. All right? So book your room. Get a ticket. Zoom in. And don't miss it. October 15th, Saturday night, we're having a real estate party, baby. And let me tell you, if you're really into real estate, it's a night that's really going to be productive for you in your life. All right? So get your tickets. All right, we got John here sending you a super chat. So whoever's got something to do, yeah. get a fast pass. Call in. Be part of this. We're not one of those YouTube things where, you know, you're the audience. Join us. Be part of it. All right? We got John Burpee here tonight. I hope we're not going through the whole screen thing again with the uh, going off and stuff. And I think we're off the air. Are we so off the air? So to start, yeah, no, we're good. We're good. But to start, what did you do today? I haven't talked to you all day. All right, listen. There's no way I can tell you what I did today. You want to know what I tell you? I tell your mother. You want to know what I did today? Yeah. Go through my phone. Go through my emails <laughs> and see all I do the calls one of those I things. took, all the messages I took, all the emails I took. Let the devices show you what I did today because there's no way I can tell you or even remember. All right? John Burpee's here. And let me tell you the story about John Burpee. John Burpee picked me up. This is before I was married. Okay. We're talking a long time ago. Picked us up and chauffeured us around. And then the deal that he wanted me to buy was already tied up. Okay, quick story. The deal that he really wanted, that was the best deal that was on the table was tied up. I'm in a 1031. I'm trying to get the hell out of California, get married, move out here, and start a new life. And what he does is he takes me to a deal that he already tied up with his Really good friend. Okay, that guy was a good friend of yours. He was we sold friend. him a lot of shit. Yep. But he wasn't as loyal to you as yep. I was. No, he was not. Okay, because yep. he wasn't. He's a Tampa guy. Tampa guys don't play like us Pinellas guys. Okay? <clears throat> so, you know, he what, he so what he did was he showed me the deal, even though he just tied it up with his buddy. We won't mention his name. And I said, man, this is a sweet deal. And then he told me the price the guy was paying. And then <clears throat> I said, you know what, John? And correct me if I'm wrong, because, you know, it's been 20 years, John. Uh, I told you, call him up and see if he'll flip the deal to me. Yep, exactly right. And he did. Yep. The guy made a million bucks plus for doing nothing. He bought me a fucking corned beef sandwich, and we <laughs> consummated the fucking deal at a deli That's for right. 19 yeah. Lenny's. That's true. And, you know, me and that guy became competition yep. and friends. But John basically... And then it was a great deal even paying the guy off because compared to the money I made in California, you know, it was a great deal. <clears throat> John basically put me in the circle, okay? You got to be in the network. You got to be in the game. You got to play with the other guys in the sandbox. And John Burpee put me in that fucking sandbox and gave me a shovel and a bucket to play with, okay? <laughs> and next thing you know, I meet John. What do I meet? I meet the lawyer I need to work with. That's how I know Tom Nash after 20 years. Yep. 
Yeah. And that's how I probably met the bank. Uh, back then it was Colonial or something. Colonial, so, you know, John did. He didn't just sell me a property, okay? And, try, and he found me fantastic deals, okay? And he didn't just do that. He put me in the world of uh, real estate here, got me in a circle so I could start making moves, okay? So I can't thank you enough, John. I don't know if I ever told you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm telling you that 20 years later. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I appreciate it. Because hey, let me tell you, if it wasn't John, I would have flipped all those deals. I would have made all the goddamn money. And I wouldn't be sitting in this big fat mansion right now. I admit it. All right. There's people in my life that have helped me and and and, and put me in the right position and helped me get where I'm at today. You got it. When you find these people, use the hell out of them because work the shit out of them. Goddamn. When you find a golden egg like this or a, a chicken laying some eggs, you got to be nice to that chicken and keep giving him business and he gives you business and we all grow together because, John, you've done pretty good too. You were wearing a Timex when I met you. <laughs> now he's wearing a fucking Rolex. Holy shit. He's driving a brand. He got the same Corvette as a little uh. bit outside. Yeah. Probably better because John likes nice shit. I went to his house once and he had fucking yeah. high end fucking muscle cars and all this yeah. shit there. It's not a Corvette outside, it's a Ferrari. <clears throat> oh shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> they <laughs> look the same to new ones. A little bit was smart. He bought a Corvette that looks like a Ferrari for a third of the price. Uh, My wife's got a Ferrari, but not as nice as yours. Uh, what kind is that? Uh F twelve. Ooh. That thing, that's nice. My wife is a Californian. <laughs> All right. Well, John, we appreciate you here, and you got a world of knowledge. That's a fucking fact. You know, me and you only did a lot of multifamily together. What other type of real estate have you done? Yep. You know, we also did the first hotel you ever bought, the Oasis, Treasure Island, the little small one. The little small one. George right? Gillis sold that to me. Yeah. Well, we I think we sold it for you. You sold it to the Chinese. Uh, I people think so. Yeah. Navy. ISIS. It was called ISIS. ISIS. Yeah, and then the ISIS. terrorist group came out yeah. called ISIS. Yeah. And then the new people had it. I told yeah. them, you better change that fucking name when I sold it. It was either that one or no, the other small one. I can't remember which one it was. It was one of, the, one of the first ones. I know you sold me a lot of fucking apartments. Yep. I don't remember. Yeah, over 2,000 units. But who knows? You had your hands stuck in any pot yeah. you could. That's yes. <laughs> what you got to do. Still do. But when yeah. you do other shit too, you do shit you never taught me. You never taught yeah. me industrial. You do industrial. Anything with a cap rate is is the way to think about our firm is that, you know, if it's got cap rate and if it's got an income stream to it, that's us. We're not vacant land guys. We're not development guys. We're, you know, we're income driven, cap rate driven type firm. John keeps it simple. And the best thing about John is you don't get no fucking bullshit out of him. All right. Every deal, he's your fucking advocate. That's the type of broker he is. And somehow he's an advocate, whether you're selling it, whether you're buying it. You know, if he's working for you and he's earning a commission, you got somebody fucking backing you up. You got a hired gun. And he's ready to shoot. I mean, he's a smart guy. He taught me a little bit, a whole lot. Okay. A whole fucking lot. Uh, and, um, you know, but you do anything that has to do with anything, really, right? except land development, right? Yeah, you know, industrial, office, retail. Um, we're also a full-service management company. We manage several thousand apartment units as well as retail, office, industrial across the board. So we're Your wife's still running that, right? She does. She runs it full-time. Hey, you don't time. mess with his wife, trust me. She knows what <laughs> I don't, she's doing. I don't mess with my wife. So. She, knows, she, she knows what she's doing. Well, you know, you've done it all. You helped us tremendously. And there's brokers out there. You just got to find the right broker. I got lucky. I found them while I was in California, but you never know how you're going to find them. You got to talk to people, and then when you see you got some kind of click going here where they know that you're going to help them and you're gonna, they're going to help you, you know, you got to work those relationships. You know, you make money off of working with other people, you know? So, I mean, and then you say, you, um, and then, you know, because brokers will feed you a lot of bullshit, you know that. True. And you said you had a concept you want to start. Uh, helping people with that, right? Yeah, yeah. We're we're uh, in the process of putting together a set of forms that'll basically underwrite an entire deal for you from start to finish, and then we're also in the process of putting together a, a channel that'll kind of give the layperson the back end of the business and the tricks of the trade that a lot of brokers try to pull off. I mean, we look at pro formas every day that come in on the property management company. And we'll walk away from the deal. And when someone says, well, why would you walk away from business? And well, I can't, I can't manage your property for 35% expense ratio that this broker's telling you that it's going to operate at. And I'm not going to be the bad guy a year from now when you come back and say, I'm not making any money. Why am I not making any money? Well, you bought it at a 35% expense ratio. That's the problem. People buy properties and then they want to turn it over to another company and expect everything to be perfect. Well, if you didn't buy it perfect, you're not going to get perfect. So you're in a very tough position managing other people's money. I can't do it. I, I refuse to do it. I tried it when I was young. It sucks. 
because you got all the fucking responsibility. You do. And they're crying the blues. Why are they not making money? And they have nothing. They ain't doing shit. You know, I, I can't work with people like that. You want to be in real estate? I like working with people who get their fucking hands dirty. You know, so I don't know. You know, you know, you you. I got blamed for it, but you know, really, you're the reason um, that that. Uh, my ex- old friend Bob Goldfinger, you know, you know the story behind him. He was a big shot broker in his day. He was. I mean, Bob Goldfinger yep. worked for Marcus Millichap. He was a big shot broker in Tampa Bay area. Colliers. Well, it was Marcus Millichap for many, many years. No, yeah. he, he when he was Colliers, maybe he transferred, but every since I know, yeah. was, I know it's Eminem, and then he left and went to somewhere else. I don't. know. They all went everywhere. They all do that. Anyway, long story short, <clears throat> because you sold me that deal. Wait a second. It was a, it was a re- oh yeah, because you you I got the, it. because you flipped that deal to me that first right. deal. He was the broker selling it on the buyer side, right. on the seller side, and the seller was a major fucking reek. Right. I mean, probably the biggest in the country at the time. Yeah. And when they found out that, um, and they gave him a lot of business. When they found out that that contract got flipped and he didn't get the top dollar, he should have. Holy shit! He lost that fucking account. And they called me, and 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 he he, he it killed him. It really killed. Him. He almost had a heart attack. Mm-hmm. And then I gave him a real heart attack after that had to do with the uh, that deal I bought when uh, the guy died around here. I bought his whole fucking portfolio oh, out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whitehall, yeah. Whitehall, yeah. Whitehall. Yeah. <clears throat> then I caused a heart attack because yeah. he thought that he was going to buy it. And I yeah. said, "You're a fucking broker. You're not a buyer. You want to step to my fucking level? Then come on with it, baby. You'll, I'll get that deal before you yeah. will." And he thought he had it all tied up. Those are know? all the smaller properties. He was trying to get the listing and trying to sell, buy it with partners and all this bullshit. And then when he found out I tied the fucking thing up. He, he literally had to go to the hospital. The phone dropped when he was yelling at me over the phone <laughs> in his office. And the kid that worked for him, Tim, whatever, he said, fuck, we had to call an ambulance for talk of him that day. We didn't think he was going to make it. No kidding. And, I, didn't, uh, I didn't know that He story. started the heart attack, and I finished <laughs> it. But then luckily he's alive and healthy today. He's a good friend of mine. But um, Anybody want to get the first caller? Bring him on. Bring him on. All right, Georgie. Hey, how you doing? What's how you up, doing, John? How you doing, Ben? Turn your mute off. Oh, uh, how the hell do I do that? You You're good me? now. Keep talking. You're good. You're good. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, I, I um, I have like my grandfather passed uh, about a year ago, and um, I have the house under probate, and I was like, um, in the will to get the property, and um, I pretty much have like, uh third of whatever is owed on this reverse mortgage and i was wondering um if there was any like services or like like you know companies that would help like like you know like a hard money loan to pretty much like buy the property and like pay off the principal throughout the year or whatever um I was just wondering maybe if you guys had any like leads or what you know what i could contact <laughs> possibly get the house is worth around 650 and i owe like 350 on it and i pretty much have like 200k up in the bank but i have the rest of it in cash and like i can't just go and show up with you know all right john you gotta do a say about probate you're a probate guy you do that shit too don't you we do uh receivership work and probate yeah yeah a lot of it yeah <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the the one thing I would say to you is that you sounds like you've got enough equity in the deal to go to any local lender and take out the take out the first right away. With that amount of equity, you're talking about almost fifty percent equity. I don't see any bank in the world not being able to do that deal for you and just take them out once you I exit. Mean, the, the other thing too is, uh, do you have ownership of the house? Did probate good? Is probate over? Do you got legal ownership of the house? Well, right now I'm like the. It's me and my sister, but my sister's giving me like the the all the debt, which I'm okay with. And uh, she gets and half. She gets half. I don't care. I might as well pay right. off the house. Can I'm you buy to... her out now? Can you buy her out? Get her out of the way. Oh, I bought her a house seven years ago. I'm, she's she's oh, cool now, with me. I mean, but the point is this: you want to get you want. What do you want to do? You're, you're inheriting a house worth six fifty, right? You owe three. Your, your grandfather owned three fifty on an reverse mortgage, right? Yeah. All right, yeah. so you got three hundred thousand dollars worth of equity in it. All right, so yeah. what do you want to do? I mean, what, what's going on with the house right now? You want to sell it? What are you going to well, do? Well, I mean, I want to, I want to Airbnb it and like just maintain. I don't want to lose this. But the my grandpa bought this house for like forty k back in the fifties, 
And it's just, you know, I wouldn't want to lose the house. I want to keep it. And I want to put it under a trust. And um, and I want to give it to my nephews. And then after that, I want to take, like, you know. Well, what do you want to do right now? You want to oh. pull some money out of it? You want to rent it out? What do you want to no, do? Well, I mean, I have an efficiency. I'm renting it out. Most of it, what I'm saying is I'm trying to pay off the house. And I want to know, like, where I could go to, like, get that. That bank, what do you want? Old. I understand. You want to pay it off because you have to pay it off. You want to pay, to pay it, it off. off. I want to pay it off, and I'm in the middle of of the probate, but I'm trying to find the right bank that's gonna. All right. So like, let's say you found a bank that said, "Okay, we'll pay it off." You're still gonna owe them the three fifty. No. Yeah. Yeah. To that's, ex that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I need somebody. I need. I need a bank that I'm, I'm gonna owe the three fifty, but then I can also pay off the principal. Not all at one shot because I can't just go to the bank with 100K and be like, uh, deposit this. Listen, 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 what John said is true. If you got a house worth three, 650 and you're only trying to get 50% value, now if you're trying to get more than that, you know, they're going to want to say, okay, how are you going to pay us every month? They're going to want to see you. They're going to want to see who you are, what your income is. You got a couple of hundred grand in the bank. That's great. Yeah. So all you got to do is go get qualified to refinance the house. Go to somebody and say, listen, I want to buy this house or I'm going to inherit this house. And uh, and then just bar see how much money they're going to loan you. You owe any money to anybody? You ever borrowed money nah, before? I mean, I have good credit and all that. I you mean, know, what, are, what are your tax returns say? How much you make in a year? Well, that's that's the whole problem is I I did yeah. a lot of people's taxes. Don't tell us it's got... illegal. No, Whatever no, I did, doing, I did taxes. It's illegal. For Don't people. tell us on my channel, all right? No, no, no. I'm, I, way, I, know, I don't like to people. judge people by appearances, but your ass looks like I don't want to know what the fuck you do for a living. <laughs> oh, all right? Man. You look like a tough motherfucker to me, boy. Uh, I'm just kidding. I've been, I've been hosting South yeah, South 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 South. Where are you working in? A brothel right now? Oh, are you running my, some kind of brothel or some of the chandelier? It's a little arcade room for this Airbnb I got. Oh, going. yeah. Who knows what's going on at Airbnb? <laughs> I wonder if it's an Airbnb Plus. I don't know what the fucking Plus means. It means they change the sheets three times a day. Hey, how about Airbnb by the hour? Is that legal, John? I, mean, I don't think so. <laughs> how they about got those on All right. Maybe, maybe on 56th Street. What's wrong? Fifth, Street and what's wrong? That's about okay, it. but let me ask you a question. Let's take the whole. Dirty aspect out of it, right? Okay. I don't mean to take up your phone call, but I, if I don't say it now, I forget. What is wrong with if I have people that don't need a whole? Have you ever, you know, stayed up late and you got to get up early and you need a fucking room just for eight hours or six hours? Have you ever done that? I mean, no. you've never <laughs> rented a room and only slept there and got up and got the fuck out overnight on a road trip? Yeah, maybe. All yeah. right. Yeah, that's happening. Yeah. Like, well, why like, can't we offer hourly rents in a hotel? Well, I mean, I rent this property out right now, so but it's like just so the, you know. So All I right. Have so what do you want to do? How much you making a month renting it out in an Airbnb? Or what's the most you can do? Let's say seventy five hundred. Seventy five hundred a month. All right, you're doing great. So basically, you need to go get pre qualified, but but you got to show who you are. And I did my taxes last year, and it showed like fifty k. I know it's bullshit, but it's what it showed. But, and you proved the Airbnb money. Yeah, I, now I can. I've been told. Now I can. I've been told banks are are starting a loan on some Airbnb. Yeah. Have you heard that? Yeah, they still will. You no, know, if you can prove it, you got to put the money in the fucking bank, not in your goddamn mattress. Yeah. No, of course. No, I have it in the bank, but not all of it, you know? Oh, uh, that's right. Hey, the pro, put the, the fucking money in the bank. Email. Show what you're making to a bank. They might go off the bank statements, right? Yep. Well, I've no, been you doing gotta that every week. you got to show the bank you're no fucking risk. That's what it's all about. Yeah. you got to build yourself up. you got 200 k Is it legitimately being in the bank, or is it sticking in the it's in, No, it's in the bank, and I also am going to get a pledge loan from Navy Federal, and I think they pretty much, like, you know, you could put 100K up, they give you 100K on 2%, and then I would have 300K. I just want debt right now. It's re I really want a right, lot well, of debt. Right now. Maybe so, Federal uh, Credit Union, did you approach them with the house? Um, Not yet. I haven't. Because you know what they'll do? They might approve you, but then they're going to attach, you know, put their hooks in that money you got sitting in their bank, which is okay. That's fine. You know, okay you got to put it. all your eggs in the fucking table and say, this is what I got. This is who I am. This is what I want to do. And the bank will say yes, no. And if they do say no, they'll tell you why. And then you got to correct the why. Yeah. Go to the bank. 
and just okay. give him the fucking property and and and, and lay the story on the table. It's a simple story. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna run in there tomorrow. Those reverse mortgages is that the thing when you die? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have to pay back. They have to be paid off. Some shit. Right. All right. Yeah, well, yeah. you better get out there. You need to find a loan. Go to Navy Credit uh, Federal first and see what they say. And if they don't want to do it, then you got to keep shopping around because your income is not going to support a loan of three hundred thousand a month. But you got to bring in the Airbnb money. You got to yeah. lay it on the table. Prove the money. Show them the money, yeah. and they will loan you money. Okay. All, All right. right. Good luck. Thanks for the call. Thank you, man. I forgot to tell him to come to the show. <laughs> he wow. needs to. Yeah, he, super chats. He, sure. he needs to come to the show. <laughs> for sure. All right. Uh, yeah, we got some super chats, so let's get to it. Thank you, Dylan, for the first super chat of the night. Thank you for the $2. What are your thoughts on Robert Kiyosaki and Dave Ramsey? Have you heard of them? I know Dave Ramsey. I thought Dave, Dave Ramsey. Ramsey was a chef. You're thinking of Gordon Ramsey. Gordon Ramsey. Dave hey, Ramsey's yeah. a fucking Ramsey. Yeah. The problem you know that I have, the, the other guys, the um, the the kid money or whatever, the t- tell your dad money, whatever it is. Yeah, some uh, like I, yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm I don't too know busy working to trying to help people out there. So I don't really know a lot about Robert uh, Kiyosaki, but I know Dave Ramsey. He's a big believer in no debt. No debt. Yeah. Well, if you ain't got no fucking debt, you can't fucking grow. So you know, I wasn't born rich, and if the bank didn't give me the fucking money, I wouldn't have any money. So uh, everybody's got their own thing. You know, his thing might be good for him. But to the average fucking person, they ain't got no money. I'm going to buy some with cash. True. You know, true. it's stupid to me, but that's just, a rich you know, dad, poor dad guy. What's that? Rich, I never rich read the dad, book. poor dad. I think that's the that guy good. he's talking about. Yeah, I <clears> think so. Rich. I was a poor dad. And I went to a rich dad. <laughs> okay. So luckily for my kids, I borrowed money for the bank. Instead of being a rich dad and a poor dad, I became a poor dad to a rich dad. What else? All right. Uh, shout out Tyler. Uh, thank you for the four ninety nine W Ben, appreciate it. That means much, W Tyler. stands for win. So yeah. All right, uh, shout out Bobby. Thank you for the dollar. Shout what out dollar, you Charles. cheap motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> shout out Charles Matta. Appreciate the super chat. Hello, Ben and Aaron from San Antonio, Texas. I'm still learning the basics. How do you and your sons get paid for your hard work since you like to do ten thirty one? Simple. You use the 1031 money, you buy the fucking property you have to use it to replace, you get into that property, you fix it up, you stabilize it, it might be worth a little more money even then, and then you get a refinance. And, you know, then you get some of your 1031 money back. That's how we make money. And when we get that money back in a refinance, it's a non-taxable event. Simple. Go to bitmal.com slash consult if you need further instructions. Mm-hmm. I was about to say something. Listen, you guys better get some tickets because I need those rooms filled. Listen, I'm not a bullshitter, okay? You know I'm not a bullshitter. You are not. Okay? My hotels are fucking need money to pay the bills. You know why? Normally, they, they weren't doing so good to begin with. They, and I'll show you my mortgage statement. If you come to the show, I'll bring a mortgage statement with you, with me, and I'll show you my interest rates are double right now. Okay, I need revenue. So if you care about us, like we care about you, you're going to book a ticket. You're going to come stay in a hotel and you're going to help us make some revenue on October 15th. I will consider it a personal favor to me and my family because we're losing our shirt right now. And fat people can't afford to lose shirts. We got to lose weight, not shirts. You got to call her. You got to call her. Uh-oh. Hey, Brent. hey what's up? What's up, Brent? Hey, hello. How are you? Fine. How are you? Great. I'm here in Oregon. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not too bad. I have a uh, in Illinois. In the screen. You're, you know, John likes that shit. I All do. that outdoors shit. You know. You know anything about Oregon? Uh, I've been to Oregon. He's been to Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. Not a bad view. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> that's, that's the good part of Oregon. There. <laughs> yeah, this is a nice part of Oregon. Uh, pro- where were they protesting the streets and taking over the city at? Portland. Portland. Well, Oregon. there you go. That's Portland. That's Portland. We're not in Portland. Portland to me. All right. So, what you got for us? Give us something good, Porty. Well, what I have is I have uh, 50 acres that is three quarter of a mile of riverfront, and it's EFU, and um, I have EFU. it connected EFU exclusive farm use, and I have what? that connected to, to my farm use. Yeah, I have it connected Ooh, to my restaurant. Like that shit from Georgia. I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. EFU, exclusive farm, what? Use. 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 Uh, I didn't know. Now everybody else out there knows. Tell us what that that. means. What does that mean? That means that um, 
I'm entitled to certain things. That means that I can use a camp. I can put in a campsite there, campground, as long as it doesn't uh, exceed a certain percentage of the income. There's a lot of things you can't do, too, right? There's a lot of things I can't do, but part <laughs> of uh, that would be part two of the question. So I bought this property, and um, I'm trying to put a campground into it. But what, four years before I bought the property, uh, Bull was out in front of the property of mine and it hit a tanker a diesel tanker and the diesel spilled all over about six acres they changed out about six acres and uh they have about 15 monitoring wells in that area and one of them is still testing hot for petroleum so the land so i'm in a huge fight saying that the land is contaminated and uh the state's actually agreeing with me because they don't want to change any land oregon's a little weird they don't want to change any land along the river like i'm originally from st petersburg the seminole area and if i were to describe what I have, it'd be like Bay Pines, which would be Park Street before it was all developed. And so <clears throat> they don't allow anyone to develop on there. And um, they're going to allow me to either turn it into R2, R5, or into a campground. But in the meantime, that's going to be about a two to three year process. So in the meantime, I'm trying to monetize it. And uh, I just started a restaurant that's connected to the uh, to the farm. It's Tai Landing in Oakland, Oregon. And um, my goal is to uh, have, I have, um, it's world-class fishing there. So all year round, it's one of the few rivers in the, in the country that has uh, year round fishing with salmon, steelhead and sturgeon and striped bass. And it's, that might not mean anything to you, but it, it's comparative to like Boca Grande. Florida. This is really big right now. It's major. Yes, it is. You know, so motive to get people out there. But let's get back to the dirty land real quick. I don't mean to cut you off. Listen, I've dealt with dirty land. You've dealt with dirty yeah, land. And, you know, what happened to the guy that polluted it? Is he gone? He's off the hook? The guy, yeah, he's off the no hook. No insurance, nothing? Uh, They got insurance. They got, they got paid out. And then I ended up buying the property last year. All right. So right now they're saying you got uh, contaminants in the dirt. They already took a lot of the dirt out, but then you still got contaminants in it? Within the water, it's in the ground. It's in the fucking groundwater. Well, yep. you know, and is there any way of, uh, there's no way of getting rid of it or what? Well, there is an enzyme they can pump into the ground. If It depends on what type of fuel it was. Have if it you was been handed a price to clean it up? Do you know what it costs to clean it up? Well, if I were to clean it up, they're going to make it stay EFU. I get it deemed non-resourceable as it is. So that's better for you? That's better for me. That would All turn right. it in for, that would, that would take it to about an acre and a half is selling for about 350,000 uh, with bare land out here. And I got 50 of them right there on the river front. So it's, it's have you said? 350 an acre. 350 it's, times 50 is like $15 million. Yeah. It's a huge thing. Listen, listen, can you sell that fucking, what are you stuck? You want to be in the woods? Get, get that money. Can you get, how much did you pay for this shit? Um, can you repeat that again? Sorry. How much did you pay for this wonderful, dirty lake, lake uh, waterfront place? Five thirty with four, with one hundred and ten up front. All right. So basically, you're telling me how much can you walk away tomorrow with if you sold I the whole thing right day? now for about eight to nine. Oh my god! And you go back to Seminole, you know, and live like a normal <laughs> life. I mean, you know, <clears throat> listen. I, how much money you got in the fucking bank? Well, I got. Um, I'll be able not, to develop not eight million dollars, right? I'm equity rich and cash poor right now. Um, well, and that's what your problem is. Why are you holding on to this fucking land when you hit a home run and can make $8 million, even if you're paying the fucking tax on it? Why? Have you ever going to have a chance to make that kind of money in the rest of your life? I mean, even even $8 million oh, put in, 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 no, in, in a treasury. No, I have not had that. You don't want a pot of gold, but you don't want to fucking cash it in? Yeah. I mean, what are you doing? You're sitting on $8 million in fucking Oregon with a property you paid five hundred grand for? I mean, I don't understand what the problem is. Can you sell that property tomorrow and get millions of fucking dollars? Can you? Eventually. The only reason I was thinking about it is because um, I'm from the hemp industry. So I have... Uh, you want to grow marijuana there? No, no, no. Hemp, not marijuana. But what is happening is that I have the licenses for hemp. I have the top... I have, um, I have a grower's license for hemp. So can you get $8 million that, dollars and buy a nice place to grow it? Well, yeah, but see, that's exactly right. You get 1031 that's, into that fucking thing yeah. and not pay no tax. 
I don't understand why would somebody have no money in a fucking bank? And I'm not, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to pick on you. I'm just telling you my feeling. Why are you sitting there with this fucking dirty, the land is dirty. You know what the hell to do it. Make a campground. You got a restaurant. You got eight fucking million dollars. You get your hands on and start a fucking real life. I don't understand. Maybe I'm missing a piece of the puzzle here. Cause I started, I moved from Florida with about seven hundred dollars about eight years ago, and that's even more reason. That's even more reason. I know. Reason. Well, the problem what is, the is, that- is a guy like you ever going to get his hands on eight million fucking dollars yeah. and then have a plan to reinvest it without paying tax? You go sell that fucking shit tomorrow. I don't care if you get five million. Come on, let's be honest here. You, how much money you got in the bank right now? Nothing really, right? Not much. About forty. All right, forty grand. You, you, you're a fucking multimillionaire. You got an opportunity to be. If you, if what you're telling me is true, you need to get the fuck up out of there and take those millions of dollars and laugh your way to the bank. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. What, what do you want me to tell you? Just, just start a fucking campground and rent the fucking people coming in to fish and, and, and with their campers. I mean, give me a break. You're gonna make that kind of money and move the fuck on. You got to know when the party's over. Your party's here. If you wait till the party's over, you're gonna have shit. I guess I don't know. Yeah, just just consider that you know if you can pull out eight million out of that deal, ten ten thirty one of that into a triple net lease deal somewhere. At, let's he wants say to a, grow hemp. Let him go a, buy a fucking... even at a five. No, cap no, 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 no. I don't even want at a grab five cap. That's four hundred grand a year in net income across the board. Are you able to pull four hundred thousand dollars a year out of that property if you develop it into a, a campground? I believe so. Yes. You believe but so, but you don't know. Wait, well, you new off, invest, of the, you know. off of the first five spots <laughs> that I'm planning and putting in a revenue about 75,000 for the first year. And I could expand on that. Uh, just what depending on campground anyway, you're talking about people coming in fucking RVs or tents or what, what are they going to do? You're going to pay yeah. to their fish. Yeah. Listen, you better get your hands in that fucking money. Then go buy a fucking place like that. It sounds like you're more passionate than you are thinking numbers. I mean, it sounds like you're really a passionate person, and this is like you know, something you dream is about, or something. I mean, is that the, no. the piece? No, it just ended up. I've been in a, I've been across the country. How old are you? How old are you? Thirty nine. Come on now, you're almost fucking forty. You got a chance to get millions of fucking dollars <laughs> in your hand and do whatever the fuck you want. That's what you need to do. All right, you're talking Correct. about developing something that you're uncertain about. It's not proven. You don't know. It's a great place, but nobody knows the fuck about it. Stop. Uh, get the fucking money. All right. I'm just telling you what I would do if I was you. Get the no. fucking money. Money, cash is king, baby. Then you can do all kinds of shit. And I'll second what Ben said. Fuck that. You got no 40 grand versus 8 million. Take the fucking 8 million. Yep. Put 1031 oh, it, put it into I'm, triple I'm, net and live off, the, live off the cash flow the rest of your life. I mean, do something. You can do anything you want. You got 8 million fucking dollars to work with. You know, you can do the hemp, you can do the fishing, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Get the fucking money. All right. I mean, I don't know what to tell you unless you tell there's something else you want to tell me in this puzzle. Nope. I was going to try to. Um, the only thing I would say is that that's going to be about a two and a half year process. No bank's so, going to loan you any money. You know that. Huh? No bank is going to loan you any money. You know that. Nobody's going to come there, a bank, and say, okay, I'm going to loan you money on a piece of land. It's not generating any income right now, right? Correct. Then the bank ain't going to loan you shit. So you're stuck with a fucking asset you can't leverage. But if some guy wants to buy it and pay you millions of fucking dollars, you better hurry up and find a fucking seat for that ass. You got the seat. He's got the ass. And you better fucking do it, man. That's all I can tell you. Don't all make right. me kind of argue and kick your ass. I, I swear to God, if you don't fucking sell that property and become a multimillionaire in the next fucking so I'm going to have to personally, and I hate arguing. You're going to make me come down here and fuck you up. That's what you're going to do. Oh, I'm Everybody, sorry. <laughs> I hate to see people have access and opportunity, and they're not exercising it. I, I mean, well, I just I mean my best wishes. No, 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 you're right. right. Listen, you know, it ain't easy becoming a multimillionaire. All right, you no. walked into it. You better fucking do it. The guy <laughs> that you bought it from didn't know it was worth millions of dollars, or it wasn't yeah. worth it back then. All right. Well, no, you're saying right what now, I've been told by other people. Property, before you sell that property, it's already got dirt, uh, oil on it. I hope you get away with that. Right. You better, you better get rid of those fucking bodies you got buried there. <laughs> I can tell you that, too. All right. They're anything very else? deep. Anything else? Um, No, sir. I just want to All say right. thank you. I appreciate thank the show. You. Go. Next time I talk, you better be a fucking multimillionaire. Hey, you, you get a chance to come on out here. You come to my place. It's the best damn you place. You'll see Tiny Landing, Oakland, Oregon. 
Oh, October 15th, come to Tampa. Come back and see your old hangout in Seminole. Joe hey, Burke, I'll go, hey Seminole. I used to drive past your place all the time. How I, how I saw you was I was uh, on the YouTube thumbnail. I saw this house. I go, that looks like Ryan Howard's house. What the hell's going on there? Some fucking guy in front of it. Yes, and uh, hell, I right clicked there. on it, and here we are. Well, here we are, and you got a chance to come to our event next month, and you got a chance to be a multimillionaire. All right? I want the best for you, so you better do it. All right, good luck to you. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Take care. Wow. Is that, is that the lead? Help. Is that the lead the horse to water thing? I don't is know, but people is? need help, and I want to help them, but they just <laughs> they got a click in their head. I know you got no money. I can have a lot of money. What do I do? It's simple. You know, I mean, I hope he fucking sells that property and gets that money and comes back to Seminole and then come see John yeah. Burpee, and he'll sell you a real fucking investment. Okay. Yeah. Wow. What else we got? Crazy. Um, shout out Grant. And by the way, his name's John Burpee, and the first property he sold me was on Belcher Road. That's right. Belcher <laughs> Had Burpee and Belcher. Yep, he's got it. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Uh, shout out Roger. Thank you for the uh, super sticker. Appreciate that. And then shout out Jonathan Pity. Thank you for the fifty dollars. All right. Thank you. He's gonna be plenty of soap sausage for the poll. Thank week. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, I have a 27-unit property that I bought early this year for $2.3 million, and I owe $1.8 on it. My new rents average 1200 to 1300 per unit. Starting to refi now. Any suggestions for getting a good appraisal for a new $2.6 million loan? Well, you don't have to change. You don't have the choice to get a good appraisal. The, the banks are picking the appraisers today, so you don't even have an input on that. They have to put it out to their approved appraiser list, and then it, of course it'll be dependent upon what the market values are, what your rent. What, what your, you got to do to get a good appraisal? So, well, you're, you got to get your NI, NOI to you know max out, and you know it's all based on cap rate and net operating income, and you know where your expenses <laughs> are. Expenses have to be within market range because appraisers aren't stupid today. They they're not just going to take your numbers and say I can operate this this thing for twenty five percent expense ratio. It doesn't work that way anymore. Twenty seven ain't too bad. Yeah. But listen, you better make sure you got every fucking rent up. That's the ticket. You know, you need to have every rent you can at that new rate. Okay, because it sounds like you bought them at an old rate. You've been raising rents, which is really smart. You increased your goddamn uh, equity and value in a property. And I'm going to tell you right now, believe it or not, I don't know. It works for me. Try to dull the place up a little. All right. I don't know what your front is, but pictures tell a thousand words. It may not get you a whole lot more money, but it makes the bank happy when they look at it. Pictures are nice. Fix up the front, landscape, paint, whatever you can do, spruce it up, you know, and uh, <clears throat> lay it on the table, you know, and just treat. And, and if you can't get all your rents up by the time you have the appraisal, It'll show that you have a track record of doing it and then even show the guy a schedule of when you can raise those rents up. Right. So he'll see the light coming at the end of the tunnel there for you. And, and that'll help you too. But I mean, I mean, just, you know, I just did some quick math for you real quick and I, you should have any problem qualifying for that kind of a loan on 2.6 loan. You know, it just depends well, on you, what your market is. I don't know oh, where you're at. Oh, he wants a loan at 2.6. Yeah. How much is the place yeah. going to be worth? It's going to be worth yeah. 20% more than that. Yeah. If he's got, uh, Let's see. I don't know. He's got about what has he got? Thirty five grand a month 35 coming in. Thirty five grand a month. Yep. Thirty five grand a month coming in. He might get. Yeah, he should get it. He yeah. should get it. It's I'm sure a, expenses are much. About a four million dollar deal, maybe a little less. Hopefully, you're managing it yourself and you have low expenses. All right. Well, good luck to you. Get the place. Show the guy the money. If the numbers work, the numbers work, right? right? Yep. All right. What else All you right. got? IB Crypto. Thank you for the ten dollars. Talk about writing off cap gains via opportunity zones. Ooh, you know about opportunity zones? I don't mess with them. The only thing I know is you can hold the place for 10 years or something like that, yep. and then you don't have to pay capital gains. Is that true? I think. Right. You don't have to I pay mean, capital you know, gains. Uh, I don't know. You can write off capital gains, opportunity zones. I don't think you get to capitalize on the opportunity zone until you've owned it for 10 years. You've earned the right. Then. Right. You just defer the tax is all you do. You don't, you don't, you don't have to pay the capital gains tax. So. Well, you don't pay it to you sell anyway. Right. So basically you got to earn that right to have opportunity zone by owning it for 10 years. I think maybe was asking his capital improvements rather than capital gains. If he can write off the capital improvements rather than put it on the balance sheet. I don't think one thing has enough yeah. to the other thing to do with the other. Uh, to me, opportunity zone just means you hold it for 10 years and you have to hook the capital gains. That's what I know about right. opportunity zones. Look it up. Talk to an attorney or accountant. Accountant's probably the best person to talk to. I mean, but you can always 
dep- you can depreciate your expenses and your but capex. If you talk about capex, then you know <clears throat> that gets depreciated, right? Right. There you go. All right. Good luck to you. All what right. else we got? Uh, shout out Jake. Appreciate the super chat. Also, shout out to EO. Thank you for the six ninety nine. Uh, Samuel Sanchez, thank you for the super chat. Any tips for new realtors? I'm working in South, I mean, uh, yeah, South Florida. How long have you been a realtor, John? 34 years. Uh, he's working in San Francisco. <clears throat> hey, I got a hot tip for you. My, my ex partner wants to sell his house in Sausalito. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Call Ben for a referral. So, I mean, you hired and fired a lot of uh, new realtors over your career. Yeah. You know, the, the one thing I can tell you is that be honest. Uh, you know, your your reputation is what brings you to stay in the business for 30 plus years. And a lot of people are not going to like what you say. But, you know, if you tell them point blank where the market's at on that day and, you know, a week from that day, the, the market changes and the Fed raises rates another, you know, three quarters of a point like they did yesterday. The market's changed from yesterday until today. Bank underwriting has changed from yesterday until today. Uh, they may not like what you want to hear, but you know, it's, your, your honesty is what's going to bring you forward in the market. It's a and tough position to be in right now because you're the realtor. You're stuck in the middle. Right. The seller doesn't want to realize you got to come down in price. That's correct. The numbers don't fucking work. The interest rate's too high. And then you got to convince the buyer that can't afford as much anymore why he can't find a deal because he doesn't qualify for so much because the interest rates went up too. So you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's going to be very tough. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If you're a new realtor, Number one, go to work for somebody like John or an office that's making fucking money and then latch on to the person that's making money, kiss a lot of ass, bust your ass, back them up, show them you're dedicated, and then latch on to a good team or somebody that's making money, and then you'll make money. Yeah. You know, you get get in with a a group that knows the market and, you know, become a specialist. If you're a if you're going to be a commercial guy, become a specialist, you know, be the guy that everybody knows is the apartment guy or is the industrial guy or is the retail guy in that market. And, you know, if you're from San Francisco, obviously you can't cover the entire Bay Area, but, you know, maybe you cover whatever segment, whatever neighborhood or a three, five mile radius of that area and you just carpet it. You get to go out and go out and talk to people, go out and, and, and meet owners of properties, go out and meet the investment groups. The, um, you ever been to the, um, What's that area of San Francisco I worked in? Tenderloin? Oh, I've heard of that. Don't go to Tenderloin. (laughs) Okay. You're only going to find homeless there and ain't buying or selling. (laughs) But, you know, listen, seriously, the way I made money in life, no matter what you do in life, latch on to somebody that's already fucking made it, okay, and then do what they do better. That's what I try to do with my uh, ex-boss and partner. You know, get around people making money. Don't waste your time beating your head against the fucking wall trying to start off in real estate. Get around people already making fucking money in real estate. That's how you'll make real estate as a new person. And if I was you, if you're commercial, I go to Marcus and Millichap. That's the headquarters. Yeah. If you're residential, go to the most expensive, put the nicest suit on you got, and go try to work for the for the office that's handling the multi-million dollar deals. Because yeah. then if you get a piece of that, you get bigger commissions with less deals, and you're around people making money, the higher class of people. That's one you want to when you have a real estate license, it's a license to make money, and it's a license to get in there with the richest people in the world. Yeah. <clears throat> we have a caller. Hello, caller. How are you today? Good. How are you? Can you hear me? Good. I can hear you. How are you? Good. I'm good. My name's Kate. I'm calling from uh, outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, yeah, I just have a quick question for both y'all and mainly your broker here. Um, I'm going to be a new uh, commercial real estate agent here in the next week. Um, but ultimately, my goal is to break into the investment side. So what is y'all's opinion on brokers acting in dual capacity as an investor and a broker at the same time? Uh, well, first, first, congratulations on becoming a broker. Uh, I can tell you that in Florida, we have what's called transaction brokers. And every com- just about every commercial broker in the, in the state acts as a transactional broker where we represent both buyer and seller across the board. Over the last five or six years, commissions have become so compressed that you really can't you, you, can't, you don't have enough fee in the deal to offer a co-brokerage fee in our market, especially in the apartment markets. Um, you know, it's been that way for what, 10 years here now, you know, one sided they're called one sided deals, buyers, broker, if he wants a, a buyer, wants a broker, the buyer compensates the broker themselves. So, 
you know, if you look at it across the board, um, you know, you become that specialist and, you know, just get into that area where you're at and you, you keep working towards that, that goal. Of what, what would you your know, investor part of it? You so. talk about being an investor and a broker at the same time, meaning you want to do your own business? You want to do your own deals? You want to buy your own like deals? Like he does? Yeah, we do that. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's where you make your money. You know? Problem was when John got John used to feed me a bunch of deals. <laughs> then he made so much money, I stopped seeing the deals. You know why? Because John was buying them. Uh, that's life. That's the way it works. You're yeah. a fucking broker. You get first access to it. If you got the fucking money to do the deal, you got to take care of yourself first. Yep. You know, he's got a family to feed. He's got a fucking life and a career to live. Yep. You know, so is that what you're talking about? Being a broker? Or how you just becoming one? When'd you pass the test? Uh, uh last week. Congratulations. Congrats. Now, I see your sales associate. That's what it's called. And what are you going to do? Commercial, residential? Commercial? Commercial retail and some farm and ranch. All right. Well, you got to pay your dues. Are you getting with a broker that's already making money in that field? Uh, yes. I'm actually with a broker. So he has no agents, not a big corporate company, but he actually does very, very well. He acts, He does some developing and I'm getting some good you know, training one on one. Great. You can't yeah, beat the fuck. Let me tell you something. That's the way to Don't go. worry about the fucking money. I mean, you always got to worry about the money. But you know what, people, how old are you? About 21? 22. 22. Listen, at your age, the experience that you're getting, like when I was 21 and 22, is worth more than getting paid a little extra money right now. The experience is what's going to make you millions. Okay. So you're on the right track, and that's great. As soon as you got, if you talk about investing your own money as an investor and a broker, you got to wait till you get enough money. Or maybe you and that guy could do a deal. I don't know, but you got to have the money to be an investor. You got to have the income. You got to have the ability to borrow money. Work, work your way right now into being a broker and, and doing, learning whatever you can from this guy and, and getting as much knowledge as you can. And then as the money comes in, try to stack as much as you can and get to the point where you can put your own deal together. All right. Work for him. <laughs> Come to Florida. <laughs> no, stay in Texas. He's, he's in a specialty. You're doing like some uh, kind of specialty real estate, right? Right, right. You're a retail developer. Is that what you're, that's who you're working for? Yes. Yeah. That's Those guys fantastic. make big bucks. They yeah. take fucking dirt and they turn it into fucking shopping centers. Yeah. I love those guys. I buy from them because I'm not smart enough to do what they do. That's the ultimate value add. <laughs> It is, especially yeah. construction prices starting to come down again, I heard. They are. Yeah. So, you know, but anyway, I mean, that's what you got to do. All right. Learn, learn, learn. Then when you got enough money to do a fucking deal you think makes sense, jump in that deal, put it together. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Ben. Hey, but I'm going to tell you the most important part about retail. You don't want, you want to know what it is? I would love to. The fucking tenants. Knowing who the tenants, knowing how to reach out to a fucking Target or reach out to a, a big brand, Starbucks, yep. and knowing how to get them to commit. These guys get them to commit to the fucking deal before they even buy it. Right. They already got the whole thing laid out. They buy the land. They got the tenant. They build the building. The tenant moves in, and it's worth double. It's prepackaged. It's, it's, it's the greatest fucking thing in the world. So learning about tenant relationships is a major fucking thing to make money. If I had tenant relationships, I'd be fucking golden right now. But I don't. So that's my, my I'm telling you, learn about tenants, okay? Okay. Thank you all so much. All right. Yeah. Take care. Best of luck to you. Thank you. All right. Carl is here, so she's going to make me stop cursing. God damn it. <laughs> what else we got, Aaron? Anything? The queen has yeah. entered the building. Um, God damn it. What happened to that one super chat? There just are good queens a, uh, and are bad queens. Depends sorry. what day it is with her. What do you got, Aaron? One, one sec. I'm one second. Aaron's having a, a technical difficulty. All right. You got no more callers, right? Uh, yeah, I do. Actually. Well, then put somebody yeah. on. Let's get a call on. I have Andy. Here's Andy. Right Andy. 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 What's up? What's up, Mandy? How's it going, man? How's it going? How are you? How are you? Nice Pretty to see good. you back. All right. How's it going? He came to the show. Oh, we yeah. hung out. He flirted with my wife. He drank some margaritas <laughs> and he had a good fucking time. He did that private meeting. Yeah. He did yeah. a private meeting. Man, this guy's a major customer to me. I gotta I, be nice to him. I remember him from one of the videos in the the Mexican flag in the background. I remember you talking to him one time. Yeah, right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. he's been yeah. on the podcast yeah. before. He's yeah. great. All right, so what's up today? What'd you do today? <laughs> well, I, I was just doing like a surf set my work, but I had a real estate question. Um, so my parents. They have a house, right? I'm living in it right now. It's in a two and a half acre lot. And um, we talking about this last week. You want to do it again? Let's do it again. No, nah. oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. But it's uh, um, so like, like I said, there's like, um, so we're only using for this house probably like 
0.7 acres there's still like a point there's like a 1.5 acres that's like vacant we can build on it so i went to the city to see what i can do and um they gave me a list and they said um that i need a special permit if i wanted to build which was my idea to build um a duplex or a fourplex because in the entryway because it's, it's a pretty good area because it's a neighborhood and they said i can build retail here but it's a neighborhood like why would i build a retail center in a neighborhood i feel like that's weird so um i was gonna say you know what a bodega is huh you know what a bodega is bodega, bodega. yeah yeah that is you, can, you can open up a bodega and all your neighbors come over and buy shit from you you know <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> but, but, i don't know zoning is weird but you know I, I really i really i think you know what you should do is I, I, whenever if I was doing what you were doing, I'm not smart enough to do it. He might be, but I always consult with a, uh, an engineer. My son hires a company, Impad or somebody like that, and they pretty much deal with the city yeah. and try to find out if it's worth the trouble of fighting them to get the uh, the zoning I want. But what's your question? I mean, they said you can't do a duplex or a fourplex. I said I need a special permit. I can do it, but it's. <clears throat> Permit. I was like, well, they, what's it take to get the special permit? That's the next question. Yeah, is it a special permit or special exception? There's a big difference. The paper it says special use permit required, which is they basically got to like make sure the land is good. They got to make sure the um, yeah. So it's a use change, is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's not that many hoops to jump through, then why don't you do it? Well, well the, a professional <laughs> that does it for a living. As uh, I said, building retail. They said they like that or like um, offices for dental people or like doctors chiropractors they said like they want that in the neighborhood because they zoned probably it right they're probably right but and let me tell you it's a lot cheaper to buy to build that than it is residential yeah, true because all you're doing is building a the box shell, building i mean shell. if they're telling you that i would talk to a civil engineer and verify that that would make sense number one because he knows the business and uh but what about shopping it up and selling some of that shit off can you do that well yeah but um I, that, that would be better, like more easier, right? But the thing is, you can add more value if you build a, um, like, a, what is it called again? The, yeah, if you build something like, on it, you know, then you can okay. rent it out and it has value. That I sounds mean, like, how, like, well, let me bad. ask you a question. If you did chunk, if you did put a line in a, in a place, kept a lamp in a house, and then whatever you had left, an acre or whatever it would be, how much could you sell that for today, you know? around because it's close like right next to the highway i'd say about 150 200 thousand i mean you got to sit down and figure out if you you know because you're gonna have the cost to build in that building you got the money to build the yeah. building well yeah like 100 well. yeah um because it'll be like a small building so a hundred thousand i feel like is you feel like that'll be enough for like a two thousand no. No, 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 no. Construction no, cost. Let me tell you something. If you don't have the money, two hundred bucks a square to, foot. You, when you start building on a piece of land, you got to go all the fucking way. You got to build on every inch of it that they'll let you build on. Okay. If you're gonna go construction, you better go all the goddamn way. So if you ain't got the money to go out and build, I don't know how big of a building they'll let you build there because you're gonna need parking and shit like that. You gotta find all these things out. That's why you need to go to a civil engineer. Yeah. He'll tell you, all right, this is what you can do. You can build a building up to ten thousand square feet. Uh, you need to have that parking. Blah blah blah. It's gonna cost you this, that, and this. It's gonna be major. Okay, because okay. my son builds, he builds a million bucks, uh, brought him like a, I don't know, 5,000 square foot building or something. Or no, these days, 200 bucks a square foot. That's so anyway, typical. listen, finished, yeah, but I don't know. It sounds like unless you got the money to build, I mean, a duplex or a triplex, go that route and see, because maybe you can afford to build that. But the city planner said that it's rare. They He doubts that they would do that. But well, then you're stuck. And you're stuck. I don't know. Honestly, you may want to just sell it off and let somebody else do it if you ain't got the money to do it. At least you're pocketed 150 grand, and that's better than what you got today, right? It yeah. helps right? for my parents. And then yeah. you take the 150 grand, and then that'll help them some other way in life. Yeah, they can do I mean, that. But otherwise, if the, the guy at the city doesn't encourage it, then I wouldn't waste your time with it. Okay. And then you could do this. You could put a sign up, find out, go to this back to the city, or talk to a civil engineer. Find out what is the minimum allowable land that you need to maintain for the existing property. Right. And then how much can you salvage you up to sell? And then put a fucking sign up there for sale. Okay. I got and that's what I would start doing. All right. And then just get the biggest piece you can. Maybe you can split up into two parcels, right? Yeah. 
Yep. You never know. That's why you need a civil engineer. But I'd go the sale route right for you because it sounds more feasible. You're going to need yeah. to do a survey and get a new legal description drafted of the whole property in order to break that parcel out. And then if the property's got a mortgage on it, you're going to get your have to get your bank to release that property. You, know, you got a mortgage on it? Sale. Your parents got a mortgage? So, yeah, they have 80000 left on it. 80000 How much is the house worth? It's worth four hundred and fifty. Okay. You need to carve that damn land out. You carve got plenty of equity in there. Yeah. Pl yes, carve sir. that land out. That's what I would do. Pay the house off, put the money in the bank, get a mm -hmm. get an equity loan after that. All right. Okay. With the money you get from the land, you can pay the house off and still have money in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One <laughs> one final quick thing. Um, Are you John, coming on October fifteenth? I'm gonna be honest. I can't go, but I'm gonna zoom I in. Know, I'm just kidding. I appreciate <laughs> you coming to Port Lauderdale. It really meant a lot. You came all the way from where? North Carolina, Charlotte. North Carolina, Charlotte. You know, that's a long fucking trip, and I appreciate it. It's a nice yeah. area, a beautiful okay. area. Six hour delay. What else you got? Uh, I was going to ask John, um, what's the best way to get like a big shot broker uh, interested? Because I feel like, you know, he's busy. He has all the stuff he has to do. What would make you? Or what? What do you want him to do? Just like working with them, like someone that's like at least not starting out with like, bigger deals. Like, yeah. But look, we don't turn anybody away in our in our organization. You know, we have brokers that yesterday I closed on a duplex. Uh, you know, next week I've got a little corner deal closing. Basically, so, you know, it, it's it, it's it, it's more of you have to prove your ability to do the deal. If you come to me and you say, hey, John, I've got fifty thousand dollars in the bank and I want to buy a million dollar property. Yeah. We're not doing a deal. OK, but if you say, hey, I want to buy a duplex and you're realistic about it. You know, we can then walk you through the process, like Ben said, get you talking to the direct banks, get you talking to the right guys across the board, tell you what you can expect, do your underwriting for you, give you an idea of what's in the market, and, and just be real on your side. I mean, there's a lot of fakers out there. Let's face it. I, I get 100 calls a month from fakers. Do. Don't uh, waste your time with brokers that don't do it exactly right. what you're looking to do. Right. And then, like he said, prove it to the broker. You can do the deal. You got to do your homework first. Make sure you got the money lined up to do the deal. Yeah. Otherwise, you're wasting his time and everybody's time. Yep. But, yeah. you know, first focus on this land. Go find out how much you, land you need to keep with that house and how much you can sell off. Because the more you can sell off, the more money you're going to make your parents. Yep. Yeah. All yeah. right. And think about it. If you can pull 150 grand out of that deal in your market, you should be able to buy a duplex or a triplex with that kind of money free and clear. Now, how much cash flow is that bringing them in? Yeah. 150,000 can buy you like what? 650,000? Like a property? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, find out your money's in the land. Find out how much money you get out of that land. That's what I would do first. All right. Appreciate the help. And everyone that's watching, just make sure I go to the event. I really liked it and it was enjoyable. And y'all should get joined there too. It's pretty good. I, I liked it. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Right. I really do. How right, was, was the hotel? Was and you stayed in the hotel? Yeah, I stayed at the hotel Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Remember? Three Holy days. shit. Three days he stayed in that <laughs> hotel, boy. That's a real loyal mm -hmm. reviewer right there. And when the sheets clean, yeah, for sure. Just that, like you said, it was like going through renovation, so there was certain stuff that wasn't all the hey, way. Hey, I'll talk about that. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for furniture to come from China. <laughs> I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for the furniture, but but you had two rooms, didn't you? Two room suite, right? You had a yeah. living room, you had a bedroom, you had big screen TV in both rooms, you had a wet like bar with a refrigerator <laughs> and a microwave, yeah, and you had a view of the train, right? Yes, sir. And the train woke you up at two in the morning. I hate that. Nah, I sleep good. Trust me. Oh, okay, uh, I really do appreciate you spending all that money coming down and hanging out with us. All right, uh, appreciate it. Right, yeah. man, thank you. Good luck to you. Go find out how much that damn land's worth. Make that money for mom and papa. What else? All right, uh, shout out Andrew. Thank you for a super chat. I currently own a five hundred thousand dollar house and have about one hundred grand equity in it. Should I leverage that to purchase an investment property? But I also don't want to over leverage. You only got 20% equity in yeah, that's, it. That's that's borderline. I mean, you could go get a HELOC if you live in it, but you're not going to yeah. get no loan on it if it's income property. Yeah. I mean, if you live in it, you might squeeze uh, 10% of, uh, leave 90% in it, so you can squeeze, like, what, 50 grand out yeah, of it? 50,000 max. I mean, you know, I don't think you're ready, you know? I mean, you're yeah. in a safe zone right now. At least you got 100 equity in your house. But if you can squeeze a, a HELOC out of it for 50 grand and then maybe put that 50 grand to work on maybe a 250 deal, it's possible you could do it if you could find yeah. a 250 deal and put the 50 grand down and, and, and the property has income and you qualify. I mean, anything's possible if you try. Go to the bank and see if they'll give you a HELOC for 50 grand. Yeah. 
That's that's your best bet. I, there's no no way you're going to be able to pull any equity out and pass that. All right. So keep trying, keep saving, and try to get your hands on some money and do little deals. I did a shitload of little deals when I started out. Tiny deal. I did deals for twenty seven five. I remember. <laughs> I did deals for thirty grand. Whatever it took, it inched yep. me up until the inches became a foot. Yep. Okay. And then I put my foot in my mouth, and now I'm stuck with all this shit. <laughs> What else we got? Here's an interesting super chat. Uh, shout out Gun Glotten. I think my home inspector missed foundation issues. I pointed out several cracks in the foundation and garage floor, and he told me just to keep an eye on it. I think it's a bigger issue. What can I do? He ain't the that, right home that, inspector. Yeah, that's, that's, he missed something. I mean, and then they have people that specialize in concrete to know yeah. this shit, right? Yeah. yeah. Foundation engineers. Foundation. I mean, if you're really yeah. serious, you might want to, if you had a home inspector and, 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 you know, and he fucked you over, I mean, I'm sorry. If that's the story, it's the story. Get a fucking engineer, throw somebody right. in an engineer, get him to come over and do a, what they call seismic or whatever they call it, and, and find out what the story is. Cause you don't want to have a fucking house where you got problems with the foundation. It's just going to get worse. Yeah. Keep an eye on. Yeah, it's going to get worse. I'm watch it that's the stupidest thing i ever heard so you might want to throw a few bucks in an engineer get an engineer out there get an inspection and if he finds fucking serious issues with the foundation and the fucking seller didn't tell you and the home inspector didn't tell you then i'd go after their ass yeah i mean i'm sorry that's life you know you can't hide shit like that yeah. and this guy's got a business and you paid him money to fucking inspect the house then you know you, you go hire an engineer and find out what the real story is. That's the guy that's going to tell you. And most of those guys have E and O insurance, so you know you file a claim against their E and O coverage if your engineer comes back with a with a report that's different than his because the engineer's got the license, the, the inspector doesn't. Do it, you know. Do it, you know. Fuck that. Keep an eye on it. Fuck you. You keep an eye on it. <laughs> All right. Anything else? All right, yeah. Um, thank you again, Crypto, for the twenty dollars. Ben, can you talk about offsetting capital gains via opportunity zones? Is that what you were again with the for? opportunity zones? The only thing I know about opportunity zones are you don't benefit until you own them for 10 years. Right. Once you own it for 10 years, yes, you don't pay any capital gains. Can they offset other capital gains? I don't think so. Talk to the accountant. All right. I'm not trying to be rude, but I'm not going to tell you shit that I don't know. If I don't know it, I'm going to say I don't know it. And that's all I know about opportunity zones. For you to qualify to benefit of opportunity zone and sell it and not pay capital gains tax, you got to own that shit for 10 goddamn years. That's all I know, and I think that's all there is to it. But talk to the accountant, all right? Offsetting other capital gains, you know, yeah, you can do that with other things. Like I asked my accountant today, I want a meeting. The money I'm losing at fucking stock exchange, does it pay for me to take the fucking losses to offset the real estate gains? Yes, it does. That's the way it works. But, you know, when you start talking about opportunity zones, I don't think that the ability to offset current gains in there. I don't think it is. No. Talk to the no. accountant. Don't take word from me. I don't know shit. The, I'll be honest. I, I do know this, that there is a very good section on the IRS.gov section that, that talks about opportunity zones, and it has its own section. You can research that because I've actually done it myself a couple of times. I Google every fucking thing. Yep. I Google the price of a fucking roof. <laughs> I, I the, the, Can you imagine when we grew up? We had nothing. Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah. had a fucking pager when I met you. Yeah. <laughs> you used to have to stay at the old pager. He'd have to pull over while he's showing his that's properties yep. and go to the phone, call his office, yeah, and find out who called him. It's it. like he's in a mafia. <laughs> you know, he had to find a pay phone. Hey, call. Some of us still do have pagers. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> what do you got now? Blackberry or something? Uh, I missed my flip phone. <laughs> I want my flip phone back. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Else? Uh, <laughs> shout out, Dill. Thank you for the four ninety nine. Hey, Ben, you're the best. What did you do in the past with how you managed the renters that did not pay the monthly rent rent or come up with excuses to not pay? I mean, you know, it's property management. Number one, I always try to rent to Section 8 if I had a, a tech, people that lived in, you know, lower paying areas, uh, you know, with, with limited income. I tried to rent to Section 8. The money was guaranteed. But listen, you got to, you know, my son was better than I was because I was a sucker for a sob story. You know, you're probably not, no. but, uh, you know, my son just, he ran it by the fucking book and, you know, listen, the agreement is by the third fucking day in the lease, if you didn't pay your rent, it's late. All right. right. Pay your fucking rent. And my son had a rule. I'm sorry. I, I can't, I'm running a business here. If you can't pay your rent and then uh, the, uh, the three days go by after the three day notice, you still ain't paid shit. Then he's going to get rid of you. I mean, he ran a tight ship and in the long run, it really paid. I mean, but you, you gotta be careful. And then, you know, what I do is during COVID, 
I went to every one of my apartment buildings and I told the manager, I sat there with them personally and I Googled all the agencies that help people right. that can have trouble with their rent, whether it's COVID or not. There are agencies out there. I told the manager, I don't care if you got to drive them over to this office or go online and help them, you get that money. All right. So oh, I always tried to help the tenant if I could. If the tenant wanted help and I tried to help him, if I could, I would. But, you know, you got to run it like a business. You can't get personal. And, you know, because people will, they, they got problems. They can't pay. They can't pay you. you. Can't get blood from a turnip, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we did the exact same thing. We actually put everything together in a spreadsheet for them, emailed it to all our tenants and said, look, if you're having problems paying your rent, you can contact our Florida, you can contact Catholic Charities blah, 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 phone numbers, emails, everything all in it. But Ben's right. It, you have to run it like a business. I mean, your family is one thing, but you can't have 27, rent 27 tenants that are a family. Um, Never rent a family. Yeah. <laughs> get, luckily, my family, I didn't, I, I didn't care. I didn't want their rent. Their rent was free because they all work for me. Yeah. yeah. What else, Errol? <clears throat> uh, shout out QM. Thank you for the nine ninety nine. I'm 32 and own 100% equity of a $1 million home. Do you recommend I cash out refi to buy my first investment property? My cash flow is low, only sixty-five grand, and I'm not currently working, but looking for work. Thanks, Ben. Where's your cash flow coming from? If you yeah, ain't working, where's the sixty-five grand coming from? Yeah, we don't want to know. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I would just tell them to run and get a HELOC yeah. because this way, if you can, you're not working. That's going to be a problem qualifying for a loan. Yeah. I mean, let, let's face it. You know, the banks are, are, are you're a risk factor. You're going to have to show them that you can afford. It doesn't matter. You got equity in a home. If you can't show them that you can make the fucking payment, they're not going to fucking loan you any money. So you got to get a job. God damn it. <laughs> and right now there's plenty of people hiring. I don't know. Your cash flow is 65 K. I don't know where that's coming from. But that's something. They'll, they'll loan you something if you can show you got 65k a year coming in. But the, uh, the odd thing is, you got to go apply to the bank for a HELOC. Then the money's sitting there. You're not paying interest on it until you use it. Don't do a cash out refi because you're gonna have that cash sitting in your hand. You might piss it away. Your wife might get her hands on it. Uh, you might make a bad investment. You're gonna be too eager to spend it. Get a HELOC. You don't pay for the money until you use it, and you don't use it until you know it's gonna be worth using it. Yeah, you're coming home with a Ferrari one day. You never know. He you know? did. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, get a fucking job. I mean, I mean I'm sorry. You know, you know, get a job, get work, you know, do something to show the bank that you can, they can trust you to make that payment every month if they give you a nice handful of cash. Well, yeah, first of all, you got to look at, you know, you've got a million dollar home. And you're 100% free. You're a millionaire. Right, you're a millionaire. I mean, right off the bat, though, I mean, your your property taxes have got to be ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000. Your insurance has got to be five or six grand. Uh, you know, the cup, upkeep, upkeep in the house. So you're cutting back every time you say you got $65,000. we have already spent 4000 a month on that just in upkeep and an operation of the property. So you've got well, to have some of the house flow. and it had a low value or something, you know, yeah. it's probably worth that today. If he sold it, he probably, hopefully he's not into it for that much as far as the tax basis. Right. But you're a millionaire. Now you got to show the bank that you're worthy of them loaning you money. All right. You're halfway there. You got, well, you're more than halfway there. You got a bunch of fucking equity in a house. Now you got to show that you have the ability to pay if you borrow against it. You can't take the money and then pay with that money against it. Or else we'll let down nothing and it'll be a fucking disaster. Hell, I was a millionaire still living in my office. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, shout out Bobby Rehas. Thank you also for the nine ninety nine. I own four small multifamily properties in an area where the city is building 350 new units in the next two years. Should I hold or sell and get single family? Well, it, it's an upside and a downside. If the if the, the the new 350 units coming online are going to be priced so far above where your units are at, you're going to get the overflow from those units coming into the market. So you may be in a market that the new rents in that area are $2,500 a month for a one bedroom where you're able to rent your property for $2,000 a month. You're going to get the downflow of their of their advertising. So it's a it could be a good thing for you. I mean, listen, if you own four small multifamily properties by them building they wouldn't be building the 350 units unless they knew there was a demand for it right. they don't go up and spend 350 units you're talking about a hundred million dollar deal or yeah, more easily nobody's gonna spend a hundred million dollar deals even the city 
Okay, if they're building it, they wouldn't even spend it unless they needed it. Okay, so and I'm surprised that the city building it. That's very rare these days. Typically, they leave that to developers to do tax credit deals. But anyway, listen, that new property should, unless it's in some crazy rough place with a building project, yeah. I don't know. But the point is, new property should increase the value of the old property. Right. All right. So you might want to just see what's going to happen in that neighborhood because there must be something going on. And then you get into single family. I don't I don't like single family because you only got one tenant and you never cash flow that much. Yeah. So you better stick with those units. Make sure you're charging the most rent you can and uh make and if there's progress coming, you'll be part of it. Be happy and just raise your rents and hopefully you probably work more money. Yeah, that's growth. That's that's value add without you putting any money out there in your you area. Go. Area. Yeah. You can't you can't, you know, they're changing an area for you. And then, you know, if you got any equity in it, go try to pull some money out of it and go find some more. Maybe you should be buying up the shit out of that neighborhood right now if this new shit <laughs> yeah. coming. Now because when the 350 more. units come, also comes the retail, right. all comes all the services, all comes all the everything. Yeah, the Medical, the schools, all that shit has to grow. Yeah. You can't just throw up 350 units in the middle of fucking net, nowhere. They got to have all the support that goes with it. It's an average of 1,200 new, <clears throat> 1200 new people moving into that area. There you go. So, yeah. you know, you could be on the ground floor if they're building that shit. I don't know. I don't know where. <clears throat> All right. Uh, shout out inspiring words. Uh, shout out Jonathan Pity. Thank you again for the super chat, the $20. Thanks for the appraisal advice. Wish I could join you guys in Florida in October. Have some margaritas for me. You can join us. <laughs> book a plane, book a room, get a ticket, and come on down. All right. Uh, well, zoom in then. Zoom in if you can't make it. Uh, shout out direct sales advantage. Thank you for the twenty dollars, Aaron. Get your dad to wear the Versace glasses, baby. You still can't have my diamond chain, Ben. Everybody should check out Ben's live event. He's a Louis baby, Louis. <laughs> Screwy Louis. Oh, you did, that was the guy with the big ass. He had a gold chain. I'm not kidding you. The, the diamond fucking, chain. That it was thing all weighed. diamonds. Was it the one that weighed? One yeah. guy put his chain on me. Yeah, that was him. With that the fucking diamonds. thing weighed about 20 pounds. I thought I was worried I had the fucking gym or some shit. I couldn't wait to take that fucking thing off. <laughs> fucking thing crushed my fucking oh, chest. Man. I was almost want to have an x-ray after that. <laughs> but thanks a lot. And come on down to the next show. You had fun at that show, didn't you? Come on down. We all know you ain't got no other friends. We're your only goddamn friends. So you better come down and hang out with us. And stay away from my wife. That was the big Mexican guy, right? <laughs> she's she's uh, pleading the fifth on that yeah, one. Right. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Get those Versace's. I don't know. I don't know what you have. Oh, the Versace's that you gave me the fake ones. That's the guy that gave me. Everybody told me they're fake Versace's. I asked you, are they real? Because if they're not real, they're gonna fuck up my ears and fuck up my skin. You gave me fake ass of Versace's. Canal Canal know. Street Versace's. Huh? <laughs> Canal Street Versace's. What Canal Street? Canal Street is about <laughs> Canal Street. Yeah, they're called Vacacci. Vacacci. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, shout out, yes man. Thank you for the nine ninety nine. What's your opinion on raising money to buy apartment comp complexes, like in the form of syndication? So we've actually started a small fund, and we've been through this once once before. Um, you know, it's fairly easy to raise money. There's a lot of capital out there. It's finding the deal is the problem. Uh, you know, if you said to me, John, we want to, you know, put together a fund tomorrow, you could you could easily raise four or five, six, seven million dollars overnight. Uh, it's a matter of finding the deal in today's market. There's just and Ben will tell you this. I mean, he's in a situation right now. There's not enough deals for demand in the entire I'm market. Skinny, skinny. Yeah. I'm not skinny. I'm fat. Yeah. He used to be fat. Now he got skinny. But I met him. He wasn't just skinny. Yeah. He was fat. Yeah. Carla, can you have my ashtray, please? Yeah. Thank you. So anyway, Who's I'm not a big that? fan. Syndications <laughs> are great, but you know, basically, you better be goddamn sure you know who the fuck you're giving your money to. True. All right, because there's a lot of guys out there that don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're taking money, they're buying bad deals, and you get stuck with nothing. You lose your fucking investment. You don't get no goddamn return. So you better know who the hell you're trusting your money with, okay? Because uh, I don't take money from other people. You know, I'm a, more of a giver than a taker. And most but, um, of those guys are all fee driven. You know, you got a fee for looking at the deal and a fee for, you know, for 
reviewing the contract and a fee for me walking the it's property. The development fees. Yeah, it's just it's crazy. Money off the some of the fees that I they don't want to mention somebody's big shot name out there that does a lot, but they make their money off the fucking fees yeah. and the fucking development fees, and then they don't give a fuck. Oh, you should get a five percent return. Blah 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 blah. Adios amigos. Their name's not on the fucking hook. Right. It's not their fucking money. You know, so, yeah. and you got to be really, really careful to do your fucking homework. You're probably better off going with somebody that's a traded REIT. Or somebody that has like a reputation like Starwood Capital, yeah. if you want to invest, because you're gonna end up getting a better return. I think Starwood Capital is paying like an eight percent return or some shit or more. Oh, and he just wow. gave me ninety million bucks, so I love the guy. <laughs> hey Ben, we got a caller. We have a caller. Hey Ben, how you doing? Fine. How are you? No picture, just voice. Good, okay. good. I I enjoyed the show the show last time I was there on the tenth. Oh man, thanks very much for coming down. How are you today? Where are you good, from? Good. Where are you from? Miami. I live in Miami. Miami. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so what's up? We've spoken before. Uh, well, I got a situation that I'm trying to figure out what the best possible route is. Um, my my father, he only owes seventy seven thousand on his on his mortgage, and he's already going to give me the property. He's still going to live in it. So uh, my house, you know, I probably got like a, a little over four hundred thousand in equity. I'm trying to figure out, should I just get line of credits on both of the properties or should I get, you know, a cash out refinance on one of them so I can put, you know, maybe 200 grand in the bank and just have it sitting there so that, so I, I can start a new bank relationship, show them that I have 200 grand to put in their bank account and, you know, keep the other property with just a line of credit of, you know, who knows, a few hundred thousand dollars. How much your father's house worth? Probably... Seven hundred and fifty thousand around. There. Holy Whoa. shit! So, and you only owe seventy seven yeah. on it. Seventy seven, and I, I have the cash to just pay off that seventy seven now if I wanted to. Then, then what's he going to do? Just quick claim deed it to you somehow, or and you, you say you're going to leave it, him? gift it to him? Well, well not up to eleven million dollars. I, I, I was, yeah. Oh, no. I was curious about something that no, one of the other callers was million. talking about. 11. One of the other callers had mentioned, you know, the reverse mortgage, and I thought about about that with my father because that way he'd be able to give me the money because he wants me to invest the money anyway. He just wants to, you know, help me out uh, and be involved because he did flip houses before, so we do have some experience with flipping houses. But he wants to, you know, basically do a reverse mortgage if if I can convince him to do it, give me the money. And reverse mortgage that way is, I avoid is a monthly payout, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Reverse mortgage ain't going to give you no big lump sum of cash. Yeah, they don't give you a lump sum. But reverse mortgage basically oh, the bank's paying. No. no, the bank's paying you a mortgage. That's why they call it reverse mortgage. So the bank's going to make you a payment. It's for people that have a house with a bunch of equity but need the money every month to live. So basically, they go reverse mortgages. They tell you, well, okay, we'll tie up your house and we'll give you two thousand bucks a month on right. whatever, half a million bucks or three four hundred thousand, yeah. whatever. So forget about a reverse mortgage. That's all you give you monthly income okay you know basically you know if he's going to let you have the house or, or pledge it or whatever and you got 400k house you don't own nothing on your house well on my house uh i owe 220 something and it's worth about 800 oh i thought you said oh okay it's 400 that's on mine yeah his is worth his is worth about 750 only 77 owed on it mine is about 800 uh a little bit more before the prices started going down uh but 800 and I only owe 220 something on it. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's but a you have an equity. income, don't you? You have an income, right? Uh, I own a business, yes, and I I pay myself 100k a year. I don't want I don't want to pay too much uh, income tax. <laughs> you know, if I was you, I mean, do you know what you want to buy? Do you know what you want to reinvest in yet? That's a good question because, you know, I'm I'm stuck between uh multi-families and single family houses because down here in Miami, single family homes are really popular because not a lot of people want to live in an apartment. Yeah, but they're very lot, you know, expensive. you have to deal with all these rules. But they're very expensive. And all these approvals. Yeah, they're very and, expensive and they're really to buy. Expensive right now. Exactly. And you can't cash flow that much. I really looked at it. Tough I mean, to I'm operate. Sorry. I mean, houses Tough are to okay, manage. But you can't make no money. You know, that's the problem. So if I was you just to begin with, how much cash are you sitting on? Well, I mean, <laughs> sadly, the last time you and I spoke, uh, I, I lost all the cash that I had. I had it invested in Bitcoin, and I over leveraged, and Celsius crashed, and I lost like three hundred grand. <clears throat> so you have no cash right now. Uh, well, I mean, I'm I'm starting to recover again, but it's not a lot. You know, all I've right, so like you know, basically, grand. if you want to just secure yourself, let me tell you something. Right now is is not a good time to buy. It's a time to look. No, no, I. I, I want to prepare. Yeah, I want you know, to have the, prepare I, yourself. I want to have the ability line to yourself here. up. So what you need to do is line yourself up. 
I would just go to a local bank, all right, and lay your cards on the goddamn table. You could try Valley Bank. They're a good bank. Yeah. You know, sit down with a bank and lay your cards on the table and say, this is what I got. This is what my dad has. He's giving me the house. I got a million three here in equity. I got a business. I make a hundred grand a year. How much of a line of credit will you give me against those? And you can cross collateralize yeah, the two properties. Right. You know, put the two properties together. You might. What's the interest rate on the two hundred twenty grand you owe? Four point six two five. All right. Well, you're not going to get no better rate than that. So you, you know, you might want to leave it there. You might want to pay it off. I don't know. You need to go sit down with a bank. And 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 who do you ha who do you bank with now? Anybody? Chase. Yeah, they're kind of big, but you could try them and see if they'll give you. You know, I mean, does your father have an income? No, no, he's retired. He so what's he live off? What's he? He has like an IRA or whatever, or retirement income. No, my dad's an old guy, old Cuban guy. He he didn't learn how to do any of that so how does he pay his bills yeah, he how does he live it's under the mattress oh uh -huh. uh, no i don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Think he makes about a thousand dollars and he's a very he lives very minimal all right well you know it's probably better his mortgage if you, is only 500 well, bucks a month all right well it's definitely better if you're the one that has the equity then in that house that he owns so if he gives you the house all right gives it to you and you can take over and keep the mortgage for now until you cut a deal with the bank you know, let him gift you the house because once he gives you that house, you're now worth almost seven hundred thousand dollars more. Right. Plus the six that you got tied up in your own house you're worth a million three. You got a business that's probably worth X amount of dollars. You're making, you're paying yourself a hundred grand a year. Lay your cards on the table. Sit down and go to a bank and say, "Hey, what can you give me? Maybe it'll be a HELOC. Maybe it'll be a line of credit. I mean, you know, that's what I would do. That's the only thing you can do. You know, sit down with a bank and lay everything on the table." But it's probably in your best interest if your father doesn't have an income to qualify. It's in your best interest for him to gift you that house. Yeah, you're just like the you're just like one of the previous callers. You got a tremendous amount of equity. You're you know you're you're, you're real estate rich and cash poor. And you know, the way to unlock that equity is is a HELOC or some sort of a, a credit line on everything across the board. Borrow right, the money. That's what I'm looking you know, for. I don't money. want to sell it. You know who I work with in Miami area? National City was good to me too. They're pretty reasonable to deal with. Go to shop around. You know, you could shop around and, and you know, you can even do this shit online these days. Everything is so sophisticated. Yeah. You know, you enter in the information. Be, Good. Do you think it would be a bad idea to pay off his loan so that his property don't has do no, anything yet. Owed on it? That don't do uh, Talk how to much the, bank the first. payment ain't shit, right? How much is the payment on the seventy seven grand? Yeah, it's five, it's, it's five hundred bucks. bucks. All right, don't worry about it right now. It's worth paying the five hundred and keeping the seventy seven in your pocket. All right. Go to a bank and try to put a whole plan together with maybe they'll pay it off. Maybe they'll pay your loan off. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll just give you take second position because they're small firsts. You need to get a plan, and the only person that can help you make a plan and tell you what they can do is a bank. So you need to go online, shop around, but I would definitely get title to your father's house because it's a much better asset under your control than his control. It makes you a lot stronger. All right. Having that asset under your name, worth that kind of money. All right. 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 And how can I avoid the property taxes going up once he uh, deeds it to me? I mean, Miami uh, property taxes are going up by the homesteaded properties, right? No. Yep. He, he's homestead. I already have my homestead on mine. So if the, if the homestead, they can only go up so much every year. Right? All right, That's all you cap. can do. Yep. There's nothing you can do about property taxes. I mean, you're homesteading them. That's all you can do. Hopefully, they don't go up that much. You know, that's that's the thing. There's nothing you can do, especially in Miami. Shit, I hate to see the millage rate there. <laughs> oh, it's expensive as hell, man. It's I know. crazy expensive. Well, good luck to, to you, but I would definitely get that asset under your name, put it in your portfolio or your 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 wealth, and then you know take everything and lay your cards on the table. Put together a one-page financial statement showing what you think your business is worth. If you have any equipment or inventory, whatever the business is worth, show them the money you still got in the bank that you didn't fuck up in Bitcoin, and uh, <laughs> show them the value of those houses. <laughs> show them the value. Show them the debt. Show them the equity. You're only a fucking number. That's what I keep trying to tell people. You're only a number in the bank's eyes. What are you worth? Okay. So far, it sounds like, you know, I know you're worth a million three in in, in, in real estate assets. I know you got a business that's worth something. You're making a hundred grand a year. You must be doing well. Show them who you are and what you got right. and say, how do you want to borrow me some money? And what are the terms going to be? All right. All right. Sounds good. Good sounds luck. Good. Take care. I'll see you, care. On, uh, I'll you, see you, you up here in Tampa. All, All right, man. You coming to Tampa? 
Yeah, why not? All right. you're, the, you're the most entertaining Book person. The the, I need hey, listen, to watch TV. Uh, how are you going to get down here? You? Are you driving? Are you flying? What are you going to get a cheap flight for like 100 bucks on a different airline, probably, silver or whatever? I'll probably get fancy. Maybe I'll parachute in. Parachute in. You can parachute on the roof, but you know if you're gonna fly down, no, seriously, if you're gonna fly down, just call the hotel from the airport. We got a shuttle bus that'll pick you up. Brand new shuttle bus. I traded my wife oh, yeah. Bentley for it. We'll come in the shuttle bus. We'll take you to the hotel. We'll get you a two room suite, and we'll have a great time together. So come on down. Sounds good. Sounds good. I, I think I'll do that. Do you have a helipad on the building? Um, no, just land wherever there's no AC in your way. Okay? Yeah, okay. Land Don't land on the AC. <laughs> I'll bring the rolls. We'll take I'll... some pictures. We'll hang out. We'll have a great time. Let me tell you, it's a great event. And uh, there's a couple Ooh, of strip joints around. And, and, and there's a couple of strip joints around the corner. I know you're Miami oh, guys. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Bring a yeah, lot of yeah. bring a lot. Hey, it's no more one dollars. I think you need five dollar bills $5. now. That's right. No $5. more one dollar. No, no, I'll just take my two dollar bills. I heard if you give a girl one dollar, she throws it back at you. You know, so um, <laughs> that's all why right. you got to take the two dollar bill. Book your ticket and bring value. book your ticket and bring some friends if you have any. Bring your father. No, no, I don't. I don't have friends, but maybe I'll bring my dad. Bring your dad. It'll be great. We'll have a good time. I'm not Spanish. Of course not. All right. Even. Well, my wife's Mexican. You can kind of understand her. Your father can talk to my wife. <laughs> all right. And Tampa. Right, ben, let me tell you lot, something. Guys. Let me tell you something. You guys are in Miami, but Tampa. Oh, he's gone. Tampa's where the real Cubans are at. Let me tell you. That's right. Best yeah. cigar Miami's in the world. full of real Cubans, but Tampa's got yeah. a certain type of Cuban, you know, that every Cuban would like to hang the out cigar with. Cigar rollers. I was watching the thing on Tropicante the other night on TV. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tampa was a quiet place with a lot of shit yeah. going on. With a lot of cash. <laughs> I love the part where they come to fucking Newport Richie. Yeah. The guys from New York come yeah. to Newport Richie and they open up a fucking a tennis uh, club. A, a, no, a casino in the bar, King Courtyard. Well, or they, had, they had the tennis club. King's there Court. There. You yeah. sold me I a did. building <laughs> called King's Court. King's Court. Just oh. like the casino the Mafia yeah. opened up yeah. over here in Newport 49th Richie. 49th Street. That's right. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you got, Aaron? Um, Let's say shout out Rollin McLean. Thank you for the ten dollars, Ben. I'm syndicating a property in St. Pete, Florida, two hundred and eighty-five units, twenty-six floors from the ground up, mixed retail and residential, six point five percent per, roughly seventeen percent uh, individual return rate or something. What is rate the best way to raise forty million <laughs> in some, equity? No, forty million ain't going to do it to build two hundred eighty-five units these days. Is it's about two hundred a door? It's that's about, probably equity. So and that's, then retail. And then, that's some grand card. Don't shit you know, there, baby. Yeah, that's big numbers there. That's you know. big time shit. Building it from the ground up. You better know what the hell you're doing. I hope. Uh, but listen, you want to put that? You know, there's money out there to make uh, invest. I yeah. mean, the investors looking for that, right? Yeah, that's institutional grade quality. I mean, you're probably not going to be, you know, the, the local mom and pop guy with a million bucks. You're you're, you're going to have to go talk to the to the institutions. You know, the REITs of the world. You know, the a lot of the REITs right now because the market is so tight, they're starting to put equity into these deals. I, I would start with a lot of the REITs first and start Find making calls. Out who has so. done it? Right. Who are the guys that have been backing all the new buildings going up in that yeah. area and contact them? You're going to have to do your homework and they're probably all out of New York, but you can find these things out. Yep. You yep. got to find out, look up who did the last deals. Do your digging, hire, you know, whatever you got to do, because you're not going to get that money, like you said, from regular people. No. I mean, it's bits and pieces for condos. Yeah, the people buy condos right, and all right. that, but you want to build a $40 million deal, which I don't know. The, the, the land alone is, is going to be a fortune in St. Yeah. Pete. Yeah. And uh, 285 units brand new these days, 26 fucking floors. Oh, shit, that's a major project. Yeah, that's, that's, but you got to find out. You got to go with the people that are looking for that type. You know, you got to find who has the appetite. You got the food. Now find the people who are hungry for what you got to eat or for them to eat. That's what you got to do. All right? You got to match. You got to be a matchmaker. Find the guys looking for those type of deals. The big developers, they'll steal it from you. Yeah. Uh, but you got to find the investors. Who's investing in the big developers? You know, another thing you might want to think about is just spinning that deal out. I mean, you you know, there's a lot of developers out there that that are, have the ability to do it that don't need you as a partner, unfortunately. Or give you a piece of it, and they'll give you an equity piece. That's true. And there's there's a couple of couple of builders in this area who we've actually done deals like that with, and and stayed in deals and and left our left our commission in deals and and become partners with them over the the years. Uh, feel free to call me tomorrow. I'm, I, I've got somebody in mind that would, you know, might even be looking at taking that deal off your hands. We got his number for John. Uh, no, real simple. Oh, you got a way to contact him. Yeah. Huh? That's a super yeah. chat. All right. Well, go to benmel.com. 
what do you what do they send in number? Ask Ben and Ben Maller or something? Yep. All right, go ahead and email, send right? your information in, and I'll give it yeah, to John. Just, just He'll email. talk to you and find out, you know, if he can help you make a match, made, you know, matchmaker, make a match. I'm going to say askben at um, benmala.com. That's an email, so just email that. There you go. Ask Ben at what? At benmala.com. Ask Ben at benmala.com, and we will, John will respond. We had a pretty nice property in St. Pete. We did. It was a tax credit. It was like a newer one. Wasn't it like how many <laughs> floors? Wasn't that many floors? There were like ten floors, I think. But um, it was nice. It was called yeah. uh, something. The Portland. Portland, Portland Apartments. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful building. Yeah. Oh my god! Then you had the one over in Clearwater. But that was a weird situation. Yep. That was an old yeah, building. That That's was about twenty stories. Yeah. yeah, that was a nice building. Yeah, I lost. I, I, everybody that bought those properties, we made money. Yeah, which is fine. That's the way it works. Yep. You know, got to leave a little meat on the bone. Hey, well, you can't control yeah. the market. I didn't see the market going through the roof. Nobody did. You know, so yeah. what are you going to do? I take some profit. I move on to the next fucking deal. What are you going to do? What do you got, right, Aaron? Shout out, Casey. Thank you for the $20. Ben, I just bought 1.6 acres commercial for um, to build a shopping center. I want to buy the surrounding 31 acres to build a mixed-use property. What's the strategy to achieve that? Is it, is it for sale first? That's the that's the big thing. If it's not for sale, then you got to track down the owner. you got to you know do your public record search. Find out who owns it. If it's multiple parcels, then you've got a, a real job on your hand. If it's one 31-acre parcel, it's pretty easy. You call the guy up, say, hey, you want to sell it or you don't want to sell it? Do you have a plan to build the 1.6 acres you do it now? That's the thing. Listen, you know, I see a lot of people, they try to go too far and bite off more than they can chew That's too true. fast. You got 1.6 acres. It's fucking dirt, pardon my language. Build a shopping center, get it rented out, make a bunch of money, and then take that money and try to get the 31 acres. And while you're building it, try to find out if it's for sale. Try to get to the owner. Try to beat him down in price. But first, accomplish what you're setting out to accomplish. You know, get that. If you already bought the, the 1.6 acres, you got a building to build. And then you got to find tenants to fill it. So you got your work cut out for you. So get that done. And while you're doing it, try to look for a future, future opportunity. But get that done first. I mean, that's where your, your money's yeah. sitting at. You got the equity in that already. You already have a plan in place. 1.6 acres, whatever you paid, you got the money tied up, you got to have construction costs, all that shit. All right, uh, Samuel Sanchez, thank you again for the super chat. He said, thank you for the realtor advice. Hypothetically, where can I find your old partner's information on Sausalito Place? <laughs> Look him up. What the hell's the address? I forgot. Uh, I wasn't alive. <laughs> All right. I don't know if his address will come up or his name. I don't think so. Go to Ben Mala. Go also send us a freaking uh, send an email. At, ask Ben. Ask Ben at benmala.com. And then I'll get you some sort of contact for him. Okay. If you're really in San Francisco and you're an agent and I want to know who you're working for first, send me, send me who you're working for. Who's holding your license? Because he ain't going to give it to nobody that ain't no, he ain't giving it to no Century 21. He's going to give it to somebody that can move that damn house. And I think he's looking for like five plus million. I don't know. Maybe it's worth more. All right, so um, and he's harder to deal with than Ben. I'm gonna tell you that right now. <laughs> he met he he met us both at the same time, and uh, I think he was happy that I got rid of him. <laughs> nah, I like Mark. Mark's a great guy. Mark's he's a, a great pain guy. The ass. He's a lot of you fun know? to be around. <laughs> Not uh, no more. He's twenty. Especially years. especially after talking with the Keelas, he's a really oh, yeah. really good to be he around. He liked to drink, boy. He liked to drink. <laughs> All right, well, get a hold of us, but you better show me who you are before I try. I can't yeah. just throw you – I can't throw you gold unless I know you got a gold cup to catch it. Oh, sorry. I didn't, can't believe I missed this. IGH Properties, thank you for the $300. IGH. Man, IGH is a great guy, and uh, I hope he comes down to the show in Tampa. He's got time, but he may be too busy because he's got the new girlfriend, and I don't know if he's got time for me anymore. He's coming, he's coming but he brought her, and it was great meeting them both. But he's a great guy. He's heavy in the real estate, and he's our number one viewer, yep. and he's always giving us support. Loyal. He's helping you buy your goddamn house, Polak. He sure is. He's the reason why you'll be able to save well, a down payment. That's right. You know, so thanks a lot. And this time, we're going to spend more time together because we're only going to do one show. We're going to be in my own neighborhood, and uh, we'll be able to hang out. And this time, the Polak will buy you dinner instead of you buying him dinner, you cheapskate. I'll buy him on. Lunch. You know, probably buy. You know what to do? He'll buy you dinner at the hotel where it's free and charge it to me. I know how you work, Polak. Charge to a room. <laughs> All right. Well, IGH, thanks a lot. You're thanks, the best. Man. And I hope you come, come down on October 15 to hang out with us. All right. Uh, 
Shout out, hello, thank you for the ten dollars. Ben, I'm buying a fifteen unit for one eight hundred and fifty grand. Good price. The mortgage is sixty five hundred a month and rent is eighty five hundred a month. How much money do I need for the upkeep of the property? Is it a good deal? Uh, built in nineteen thirties in. Okay. Oh, in okay shape. I was thinking of Oklahoma. In okay shape needs work. I was thinking, but yeah, in okay shape needs work. I mean, upkeep, John. I mean, you know, he's getting 8500 bucks a month. He's giving up sixty five to the mortgage. You only have for two grand? Yeah, that's, that's Why is your mortgage steep. so high? 6% interest rates. No. I mean, no. you know, you only got a couple of grand to work with. I hope your taxes and insurance are included in that fucking mortgage. Probably. And why yeah. 8500 You should be getting, where the hell is it? That's only $500 a month, right? Yeah. That's only like $600 a month. Yeah, first thing I do is start raising rents. I mean, if you can raise uh, rents, you really need to raise rents. Yeah. I hope you're in a place where you can raise the damn rents because those rents today's day, is the building's 1930s. It sounds like the fucking rents in 1930 almost. You need to get up to the, you know, see if you can raise the rents, fix the place up a little, get some more money out of it. Because if your mortgage, I hope it includes taxes and insurance. If you spend sixty five hundred a month, you only got a couple of grand coming in. You got to have other expenses. You got to like. I hope you're not paying the fucking water and the sewer yeah. and the garbage and the landscape and, you know, I mean, fifteen units isn't a lot of money to expense, but yeah. you ain't got a lot of cash flow you in get, that fucking thing. You get you get four units that go vacant, and you're negative. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. You know, you, know, you got to raise those rents somehow. Yeah. Otherwise, you better dump it and sell. It. Let's let the next guy buy it and maybe get your money back. I don't understand. It must be in a depressed area or you're not raising rents. It's got to be one of those two things. Yeah. So get busy and find out or get rid of it if it ain't cash <laughs> yep. flow. I hate owning real estate uh, that doesn't cash flow. It makes no sense. Like you're working for yeah. fucking free. It's like buying land. You know, what's land do for you? I know. It's crazy. Yeah, unless you're going to develop it, there's, there's nothing to it. I like buying properties that come with land and I cut right. off the land and sell it. As a I bonus. I did that at Hacienda de Ebor. As a bonus. All right. I yeah. sold the land for a million bucks. It was just dirt sitting there next to a building we didn't need. Yeah. Yep. You know, what I sold it to the relatives of the Traficante. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had right. parking. They're in the parking business. <laughs> they had to protect that they're parking They're legitimate now. They're in the parking business. <laughs> maybe there was a reason they paid you a million. They had to protect that area from yeah, being maybe, developed. Yeah. You know? Maybe maybe something under the ground I didn't know about. That's right. All right. We don't want to talk right. too much about them. They'll come after mm -hmm. me. Yep. All right. Uh, shout out Miss Pingu. Thank you for the four ninety nine. dollars Miss Pingu! I didn't hang up. Rafal hung up Rafal, on me. Rafal, you hung up on the Cuban. I stay away from those Cubans. Come on down to Tampa, man. You're a nice cigar for you you can roll a cigar you can have a good beer down here cigar city beer and all that shit yeah you hit the strip clubs you know it's tampa it's like cuba used to be before castro came before <laughs> castro. My, that thing's working right okay uh, what do you have another caller yeah so I'm trying to put one more call night. get the callers going he ain't gonna sit around he's gotta get to his uh club yeah that's the last oh, caller yeah, i gotta get to the club yeah hello hello yeah hello Hello. Can you hear me now? I can hear can you. Can you now. hear me, Ben? I can hear you. Who is this? Sound familiar? This is Anthony Ben. Nice to nice to speak with you. Uh, I'm a big fan. Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks. What's going on? Okay, I want to ask you uh, how I should move forward. I'm going to explain to you the scenario real quick. I have two properties. Um, one, I live in Los Angeles, California. Oh God. One's a. I know exactly. So that's good. <laughs> that'll be at the end of the question. You just ruined the whole um, fucking podcast question. Go ahead. Okay. One property, it's a rental. Uh, I've rented it for 12 years. It's estimated 900000 uh, The debt is about 300000 I have a second property uh, that my wife and child live in that's uh, estimated $1.5 million. I owe 500000 on that. In three years, we'll finalize the divorce, sell that property, uh, the one point five property. I'll walk away with four hundred. Wait a minute, um, wait a minute. Back up a second. All right, so yeah. you, they kicked you out of the house, right? Yeah. All right, they kicked you out of the house. They're living there for one point five. When do you when do you when do you plan on getting divorced? Uh, the divorce will be finalized by the end of the year, but I'm going to let them stay in the property until she grad my right. daughter graduates. High Listen, school. I'm three telling years. you. Well, you know the problem is this: you're going to let them stay there three more years. Mm -hmm. God damn it! Because if you had sold, how long have you had the house? Uh, eight years. Because, you know, before you got divorced, that damn, if you sold a house, you'd saved uh, yeah. a half a million dollars. Yeah. She's worth 250 grand in tax savings to you. Otherwise, you don't, you know, you don't, well, I mean, is it, wait, when you sell a house, you're selling it together? Or are you selling it to yeah. you? You're going to sell it to you oh, yourself. She's going to buy her. She's going to buy you out. You get half of the house when you sell it? 
I think we'll put it on the market and then we'll just split the proceeds. Oh, okay, so she'll she'll have her tax benefit. Oh, but wait a second. She qualifies for the owner being her residence. One time. I don't know if he does or not. You better talk to the accountant. It's I hate to see you lose the damn residence. Uh uh, you know, you get the first two hundred and fifty thousand per person right. of gain tax free. Tax free. And if it's if it's a half a million dollars, if you t- 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 you're married. Right. But if you're gonna be divorced and you're not gonna be living there, it might screw you over. You know, I don't know. Okay. But she'll probably well, do I, she'll what do still I need get her two fifty because she's living. Well, the thing is this: if you if, if this scenario goes through, in three years, I don't think you're going to be. It's not going to be your principal residence unless you still claim Correct. it as your residence and just stay somewhere else because your kids live in there. You know, you might yeah. want to. You know, uh, because the point is this: if you sell that house tomorrow and you got a million dollars gain, you only got to worry. How much did you pay for the house? Seven fifty. All right, so seven fifty, yeah. and you're gonna sell it. You're gonna make seven fifty. The thing is, if you sold it tomorrow, you'd both be entitled to a half a million dollars worth of hiding uh, of gain that you would have to pay tax on. You'd only have to pay tax on two hundred fifty thousand. But you know, if she stays living there and they don't mess around with that tax, which they won't, you know, I don't know if you're gonna be able to qualify unless you keep it as your personal residence. So that's okay. the problem. You know, you might want to make a deal with her and say, hey, you know, I'm not gonna live here, but I'm gonna live here. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like that. I like that you idea. You know, because if it's still your personal residence, then you get qualified for your personal residence sale in three years, and you'll save the the tax. But you might not be able to save it if you don't have it as your personal residence. So anyway, fine. In three years, okay. you're going to let them live there, and you got a million bucks of equity tied up in the house between the both of you. What else you want to do? Yeah. What else is the story? Okay, so so in three years, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell that house. And have get the you know about four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand out of that, right. and then I have in the rental property. I live in an apartment in a third place, so I, in the rental property, I have uh, about six hundred thousand in equity. Now, uh, to make the big real estate move, which would either be potentially buying a larger apartment building, or that's my question for you: How much would I qualify for a loan? Um, when I do make this move with these two, should I uh, refinance the rental property or should I sell the rental property and then have cat both cash? Let me ask you a question. To, How yeah. you're talking about a house that you're renting out, right? Yes, it's only one single house, right? One single house. How much are you feet. cash flowing right now? Four hundred dollars a month. So, and does anybody else own own that house with that 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 rental house with you? Is it all no. yours? It's pre-marital asset. All right, I dump it. What the hell yeah. you want to? For four hundred dollars a month, you get your hands on six hundred grand right now. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Okay. Well, not only All that, right. but you know, think think back also that you know, if you and your wife were to sell the house that you have together now, you would get the you would get the tax break on it as well, and then pull that cash out at the same time. You'd be further ahead. His wife wants to stay until he graduates that's high school. That's right? what I'm thinking. You, you, your wife wants to stay there until the kid graduates high school, yeah. right? Yeah. I I'm in the same too. boat. I'm in the same boat. I got three years. I'm waiting for the kid to graduate high school, except my wife won't let me. She won't leave me. She, we're going to get on a boat and sail away. <laughs> you didn't know that. You didn't know that, Aaron, did you? <laughs> all right. All <laughs> You're right. just learning Let's that see. right now? Keep it nice. Keep it nice. <laughs> hey, but listen, seriously. You know, I don't understand why you're sitting on a house that's making you, if you're lucky, five grand a year on $600,000. All right, the six hundred thousand yeah. dollars. If you stuck in a tax-free muni bonds, you could get thirty grand a year right now. Yeah, I mean that's crazy okay. to hold a house for six thousand a year when you get because you know what's going to happen. You better hurry up, even in California, interest rates are up. Mortgages are all year low for applications. People aren't borrowing money. They don't qualify as much because interest rates went up, and that value might come down for that nine hundred even in California. But the point is, it makes no sense. Why you're sitting on a house that makes you five hundred dollars a month when you could have how much money you got in the bank right now? And I won't tell your wife. Uh, only about a hundred k. Holy shit! You could have seven hundred k. That's sense. crazy. Now you're seven hundred k. You can I, I go out buy some other family. Married. I couldn't sell it while I was married. Oh yeah, when did you get divorced? Well, I thought it was it's outside. I thought it was. I thought it wasn't part no. of your divorce. It was before you got married. That house. Yes, the house is premarital asset. Yeah. All right, so why can't you sell it now? Is she going to get pissed, or what's the problem? Uh, I mean, I just I don't want to do this. Oh, you don't want to have the uh, finalized. You know, all right, so when did you get divorced finalized? 
uh, it's supposed to be uh, December 20th. All right. Well, wait a couple of months. Big deal. Wait a couple of months. Yeah. Duck the house and then have a party. All right. You got the exactly. boss. You got yeah. 700 exactly. grand in the bank. And you're ready to rock and roll, baby. So that's, okay, so I, I mean, sell that property. You know, I got six hundred. I have four hundred from the the one when they sell. Well, that's three years three from years. now. Who's got time to worry about three years from now? You're stuck. Well, Your kids got to stay there. Leave wanna, it alone. I want to have more money to buy a like a million dollar unit or you know, like how much could I qualify if I Listen, sell that? Do you think? And I mean, the point is, if you got if you got six hundred, you say you got a hundred grand in the bank, and seven, right? Well, let's yeah. just say you take the six. Let's say you 1031 that sucker. You could 1031 uh -huh. that sucker into about a $3 million deal. Right. All right. You could buy up to 3 million bucks with 600 grand down. All right. And still keep great. the equity you. in your house, keep your 100 grand in the bank. And there you go. You're sitting like a fat rat. Okay. So you think that's the move, sell the other property, and then should I combine, do you think, the two properties and one larger property? Or if I can get three Listen, million? You, in California, you're going to be happy to find any fucking deal you can. I mean, you, you know, you're in Los Angeles. I don't know where the hell you're going to find a deal at. You may have to go all the way between Los Angeles and go far out. I don't know. Yeah, that's, probably, you know? Yeah. that's probably a duplex in Los Angeles. I mean, I don't know what you're yeah, going to do in yeah, California. True. I mean, I can't help you there, but at least get your hands on six hundred grand. Put it in, put it in some tax-free municipal bonds. Let it sit there at no risk at thirty thousand a year tax-free, and then uh, and then make keep looking for the right deal. And then in three years, you worry about the the, the house and the ex-wife. All right. I appreciate it, Ben. All right, Stay man. Well. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Thanks. Good luck. All right. Are we uh, done? We have seven more super chats right. right now, so let's bang through these. Um, shout out Carlos Caesar. Thank you for the ten dollars. Um, shout out Rich. Thank you for the five dollars. Hey Ben, I'm trying to build a horse ranch with a solar farm from the ground up. Any help funding? Any help funding? I don't loan <laughs> Do money. Wanna... I only borrow it. I'm sorry. And uh, a horse ranch with solar farm. A solar farm. What are you going to do? You going to raise electricity there? Is that what you're going to farm? Have a bunch of panels? I mean, listen, that's way out of my league. But, you know, the best way to find people that want to fund you in deals like that, he lives next to a horse farm. I do. Where does he go to get money for a horse guy? I don't know. You got to find people that want to invest in that type of product yeah. and business. All right? right. You know, call Joe Biden. They're loaning on the green stuff right now. Anything get a green. business plan and put it in front of other people that are doing the same thing that you want to do. Go to other horse farm ranch guys and other people that are doing what you want to do. Hopefully you're copying somebody else and put a plan together showing how the numbers work. And you identify the location. This is how much you need to put it together. This is how much you think it's going to make. Put a business plan together and then present it. Honestly, you could go to SBA if it were, you really, uh, it's not crazy to say it doesn't hurt to try. They'll show you how to put a business plan together. They'll tell you why they can't loan you the money and what you got to do to get the money. Yeah. Go to SBA. Look him up. Go on the line to the government. The government's got money what's for that the, stuff. He's right, but he said Biden. What's the farm bank? There, there's a there's a bank out there that just no, nothing know. but They farms. own FDA. They got uh, uh, everything. Yeah. But go to SBA because you want to develop a business, okay? So put the plan together and see what SBA says. They might want to loan you the money. They may have money to piss away. I mean, a loan on that. All right, shout out, Michael. Thank you for the four ninety nine. <laughs> what are your thoughts on bridge loans? I am a broker, and I am now offering them. Hashtag hungry. He's hungry. I think. I mean, bridge loans are bridge loans. I mean, you know, if you want to loan, you you want to broker out bridge loans to people. I mean, you got to find the people who need the bridge loans. You know, I bridge myself. You know, uh, you know, but uh, it's it's right now. It's a very very good time to offer bridge loans, yep. short term financing, because yep. people need the money quick. Yep. And if you can prove to people you need the money quick, you get them the money quicker than a fucking bank takes. Then you know it's you you it's, it's positive for everybody. Yeah, I probably get ten emails a day from brokers saying, "Hey, we can bridge money, bridge money, bridge money." All you got to find the market yep. that has an appetite for what you got. You got to get with brokers like John Burpee, who know guys that want to buy shit that need a little help to close the deal quicker or need a little money or something, you know? 
You got to get the broke. Let me tell you something. The brokers know everything. They know the people who are buying. They know the people who are selling. They know, you know, where they can put two people together. His job is to take two people, put them together, and make a marriage. He's a matchmaker. Tom Match.com. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, shout is that out. how you found your wife? Let's see. She's, I did find her. I was surprised when I met your wife. On, we did meet on the internet. You score that. I mean, <laughs> I married way out of my league. I know yeah, that. We both did. And, I mean, but I went for the young. Uh, she wasn't that. She didn't know that much, so I got lucky. <laughs> I went after the innocent. All right, what does it say, Aaron? Um, let's see. Shout out Jesus. Thank you for four ninety nine. Ben, will you do? Will you only do interest only loans still, even with rising rates? I had a great time in Fort Lauderdale. Thank you for all the information shared. Well, thanks for coming to Fort Lauderdale. I really appreciate it. Listen, I'm doing interest only. Even more, I need them now because I can't afford to pay principal. The goddamn interest rate went up. Yep. So now I got even less money to play with. So I need to really do interest only because I need the cash flow to pay the extra money I'm paying the bank for interest. It's crazy. So I hope everybody comes down and feels sorry for me and come to our show on the 15th and book a room. We need the revenue. Help pay Ben's mortgage. I ain't no shame in my game. There you go. Um, let's see. shout out Andrew. Thank you for the two dollars. Do you recommend borrowing against your home? Sure, as long as you got enough equity and you've got enough ability to pay it back, you know, just don't don't invest that money in something speculative that doesn't have any cash flow, or you know, don't put it in Bitcoin. You know, uh, unless Bitcoin was a dollar. Yeah, remember yeah. that? Remember when Bitcoin? Little Ben uh, told me, <laughs> "You put a dollar now, Dad. You better buy it." And I didn't fucking buy it. I my, said, "I'm not buying that shit." My broker called me and says, "Put ten thousand dollars into this twenty years ago mm-hmm. when it first came out." Who knows? Uh-huh. You know, the problem is we've seen so much bullshit come yeah. and go. It's hard to know when something's fucking yep. going to really yeah, make when, it. When it's real, because we're not gambling guys. We're yep. fucking guys who get out there and make our money. Yep. We don't. We're not looking for no fucking uh, a lottery ticket. We're out there getting our hands dirty, and 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 he manages other people's property, which I would never fucking do. All right. So hey, we missed that boat. What are you going to do? But well, we had our own boats to sail. Yep. All right. Uh, shout out. Hello. Thank you again for the ten dollars. What is the ex- Ooh, I made it. What is the expense ratio generally in multifamily after paying mortgage from the rent? The tenants already have leases with the current owner. When I buy the deal, can I change the lease to raise rent? What the hell is he talking about? What is the expense well, ratio It's, it's, it's kind of an open-ended question because I we don't know how much about that. I don't know how much you're putting down as a down payment. So everybody's mortgage is going to be different based upon the equity in the deal. If you got 50% equity versus 20% equity, it's going to be different. Um, but generally, multifamily uh, expense ratios are not calculated with or to the mortgage payment. They're just calculated to get to an NOI. And that ratio is about 50%. Ben and I were having this conversation. 45 to 50% is a typical Small properties are less. Yeah, smaller I, properties are less. Hero, dear, when, when I buy the deal, can I change the lease to raise the rent? No, not until the lease expires. The lease is the lease. Right. You got to wait till the lease lets you, and the lease is up, then you can raise the rent. Okay. And uh, you, you want to look at his expenses and see if you can cut them down any, and then see when you can raise the rents, because raising rents and lowering expenses is what you want to do. So you got to see if you have the ability to do it. When the lease is up, how much is the guy next door charging? How much can you raise the rent to? Is there any expenses you can lower by doing something yourself? Uh, you know, that's what you got to do. Uh, and then with the, you better know the expenses before you buy the place. I'm telling you now. And if it's a small property, don't be afraid to ask for the fucking bills. Show right. me the goddamn bills. Show me the electric bills. Show me the landscape bills. Show me everything. Call you the know? water department. Call call the call the electric company. If you get the account numbers off the meters, the house meters, they'll tell you what. But if is. the guy's not willing to show you his fucking no. bill, he's crooked. Right. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, shout out Ayeth. Thank you for the twenty dollars. Hey Ben, I'm a civil engineer and home builder. I recently go into home building and already built two homes and sold them. I'm currently scared of building another one. Uh, what do you think will happen to the home market? I mean, you know, the market's changing. I mean, the it's problem correcting. is that people can't qualify for what they qualify for. So that means that you're not going to have a bunch of people looking at million dollar homes because they don't qualify for a million dollars anymore because the right. interest rate went up. Simple as that. It's a market you're in. If you can't build houses cheap enough to where you know you can sell them, then you better be careful because what happens to guys like you in this type of market is they get upside down in the fucking house because they can't sell it for what it costs them to buy and build it. Yep. So you better be careful. You better know your market and know what your costs are. Because uh, you may be able to have to take a pause on building homes right now. 
You know, that's why I like building rental properties. Try your game in a duplex because at least a duplex, your money's guaranteed. The rents are going to come in. You can fix your interest rate. You know what your return is going to be every month. So you can offer yeah. somebody a, a guaranteed return. It's based on cash flow to value. So, you know, that's, that determines the value of the property. I think one of the easiest ways to answer this question is, I mean, look what Pulte and these other home builders are doing now. They're already cutting the prices of their inventoried homes to move them off the market. So that'll tell you right there, they're already seeing a 10, 12, 15% decrease in the market in their, in their particular uh, subdivisions. Always follow the big shots. Yep. <clears throat> Do your homework, but you better stop building because the home market rates have gone double and prices have got to come down. It's, it's, it's just, it's, yeah. it's logic. It's, it's no way around it. Okay. Unless you can find some area that's growing now, like an Amazon's going up, or you follow the big boys. If I was a small home builder, all I would do is follow the big boys. They do millions of dollars worth of research, finding out where new places are growing, where you know places are developing, and then go out there and verify that it's still growing, and then build right next to them because there's always these little parcels left yep. that they didn't want that they couldn't use. So you could kind of ride on that coattail. That's what I always looked yeah. at. The Amazon effect is not just for retailers. The Amazon Amazon effect also affects real estate and, and workers and, you know, and, you and place employment and everything else that goes along with it. I look at workforce housing. If you can build that at a good price, you ain't got to build it fancy. You right. build it somewhere where it has a big demand and uh, you're solid and safe because you got the rent coming in. Then you can refinance it and pull that money out after you finish the thing and rent it out. And hopefully, you know, you'll have something you own for free because you're a contractor and built it. Mm -hmm. So you got 20% ahead of the game. You're a contractor, you 20% ahead of the game. Yep. You got 20% equity. You got free equity. Equity. Yep. So, you know, that's what I would look at doing small multifamilies or bought, build where other guys where it's growing and other builders are, are doing big shit still. Go find okay. a guy that had the lot next to the 350 units. Yeah, the there you go. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, shout out, Carlos. Thank you for the 499. What advice do you have for a new real estate agent who wants to get into multifamily and commercial in North Jersey? North Jersey. Learn your market. That's the easiest thing. You know, you, you've got to learn the market. You're a new guy coming into the business. You really don't know that much and you know getting into it get hooked up with a brokerage firm that is going to allow you to 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 learn what you need to learn and become an expert in that field again you're never going to control the entire state of new jersey you're never going to control you know newark you're, you you got to look for a, a niche in that area that you know you can you can become the kingpin of that market find the guys that are doing the deals in that right. area all right Find the Jersey boys that are making the money. Go to a big firm. Don't fool around. Go to a goddamn big firm that gets automatic listings given to them because of their name and join a team. Come in at the bottom of the totem pole and work your way up. Right. I know guys, when I met you, those fucking guys are millionaires today. Yeah. It's like you are. Yeah. Multi-millionaires because they started at the bottom. They were kids when I met them. Yeah. Now they're fucking big shots. They yeah. don't even take my call anymore. <laughs> uh, all these, uh, uh, you know, what's his name? Think I can name a ton of them. Think about all the guys that worked for me that are now at other firms. There you go. And, you know, they learned from you, know, you and moved up and, and moved, moved on, up. you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, go somewhere you can grow. All right, and grow with people that are already in the business making money. So you're walking into opportunity, right. and then they pull you in. They teach you the ropes. You wear your nice suit, and uh, you get to work and do whatever the hell they tell you to do because they've done it and they know what they're doing. And eventually, you grow just like they grew. I mean, I know like Jason Stanton. He was a fucking kid yeah. when I met him. Jason's a great, you know, guy. he's a great, great guy. Broker. You know, there's a ton of yeah. I can name a hundred of them in Tampa. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Casey Bell. Mass yeah, Pingu. Casey Thank you for Casey <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the twenty dollars. Um, ben, I forgot to mention that the loan I have on my house isn't under my name, but I am the sole person on the deed. Should I get a loan for my house that I owe two hundred twenty five on or for my dad's that I owe seventy seven on? I don't know. What is he saying? He forgot to mention the loan that he has on his house. Well, whoever's name is under. You know, you can make sure that, you know, I mean, I hope you're making the payments because it doesn't matter whose name under it. They're going to take a house away if you don't make the payments. I mean, but you're the only one on the deed. I don't understand how he's going on the mortgage on, on the deed. Maybe you bought it subject to. I bought Could properties be. like that yeah. before. I take yeah. the mortgage and I'll make believe I'm you and I own the property. Here's your money. Go away. Yeah, I be. mean, you know, the point is it doesn't make, it doesn't change things. You own, you owe the money on the house. Okay. That's, that's the fact. Whether it's under your name or somebody else's, it's recorded against the house. Right. All right. So that's your, you know, that's still Cumber. You're in the same boat. It doesn't matter, you know. So what's it say? And your dad's owns uh, owns the seventy seven. 
All right, we'll I'll figure out a way you can borrow money, even pay off the 225 it's not in your name, and get rid of that, and then get a new loan and more some. Sounds like he needs to have a personal consult yeah. with you on that one. If you need, a, uh, if you want to do a call with him, you go to benmala.com slash shop, and then just click a consult. We have, what, 15 minute, 30 15, minute, 30, 45 hour. an hour. I don't care. God damn it. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, shout out, Anthony. Thank you for the 499 Trying to open a gym around four to 5,000 square feet. How much do you think a square foot or wait? Yeah, a square foot would be responsible in a retail location? Or is that supposed to be? Yeah, well, it depends, it depends on the market. Location, you, know. you know, I mean, you, you can, you know, uh, Fifth Avenue in New York City is going to be $1,000 a square foot. You know, uh, Pinellas Park is going to be $12 a square foot. Depends on the market. Uh, best thing to do is just start looking at, at the market in your area. Call a couple of brokers in that area. Ask them questions. You know, look on LoopNet. Look on CoStar. Look on Crexy. Like yeah, it's like anything else. Just do your, do your background research and find out what that area is leasing for. It'll tell you real quick. You can come up with the comparables and... You know, give you an idea of exactly where that market's at. Yep. And find homework. out what they're willing to give you. Listen, if you're going to take over a 5,000 square foot space uh, and then they have a vacant space, they're going to be yeah. hungry. Yeah. So they, you got to do some negotiating. The TI, you know, you, you know, find out how much free rent they'll give you, tenant improvements, right. all that. Yeah. I mean, you know, but do your homework. Go out there and shop around for the best location. Listen, retail and gyms. Listen, I own a lot of gyms. I got. Uh, LA Fitnesses, and I got East Porter, which is the same damn thing. I got Planet Fitnesses. I got all that shit. We're getting ready to buy a brand new uh, something. I mean, gyms are great, <clears throat> but it's all about location. Right. Okay. You better buy that sucker where there's a lot, a lot of people that have easy access to come there to your gym. There better be a whole thousand apartments around you or a shitload of people. You know, it's mostly people apartments that didn't go to the yep. gym a lot, but maybe homeowners. But anyway, the point is you better make sure it's the right location. Okay, and That's hopefully, it. you know, and then get, you know, make sure you try to get the property at a discount. Find out what the market is and uh, offer them less. You know, right now they're desperate. If they're sitting with an empty place, let me tell you, if I'm sitting with empty fucking retail, I don't sleep at night. <laughs> <clears throat> it drives me nuts. I had a fucking place that was 20,000 square foot empty. I was Clearwater. losing. Uh, Clearwater, wasn't it? Right here in Largo. Yeah, yeah it was a yeah, fucking yeah. shoe carnival that bailed on. Yeah, yeah, I remember COVID that. COVID killed their ass. Yep. And then I, I was sweating, you know, because I got to pay the fucking cam for them. Yep. And then and then I'm losing 20 grand in rent. Yeah. I was losing a quarter million dollars a year yeah. off that fucking empty space. Luckily, Aaron's rents came. Aaron, Aaron's Thanks. rents came and yeah. took it over, and it's great. All right. Thank you, Ben. Matches for thank you for the Bobby. super chat. Yeah, Mattress failed, bailed on me. Now I got it off of Don is doing a build out. Took that's me a the, year to fucking re rent. That's the out parcel over there. Yeah, yeah, right. Let's get through those super chat thing and wrap right. it up. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate the 199. Can I pay cash for car for my business uh, and use as an expense? I mean, you go, you can write off your car. Don't they have this thing where you buy these heavy duty vehicles or some shit? Yeah, you're over a weight on, limit, you get even more write off. Depends on the tonnage. Yeah, gross right. tonnage. I mean, any expense you have that you use for your business is a write off expense. Talk to your accountant, and then he'll depreciate if you pay cash. He'll depreciate right. your car right. as uh, you know something over the life cycle and get you the credit years. on it. Right? Don't, yeah. don't go too crazy because yeah. you don't want any problems with the IRS. Yeah. Well, Talk to your accountant. Right? I'm not going to give yeah. you accounting, but you know, tell your accountant how much you're paying for the car and how he can, you know, write it off the mileage, the gas, the maintenance. If you're using it for work, me and little Ben today we sat down. We got about a dozen fucking cars that think we're paying for, you know, <laughs> trucks and this and that. Yeah, we have to have for our business. You know, so it's an expense. Yep. But, you know, talk to your accountant and let him handle any tax return. We got a fleet, yep. of, fleet of maintenance trucks is the same way with us in a management company. So, yep. yep. All right. Uh, shout out, Andrew. Thank you again for the $2. Is a cash out refinance But if you lease home... it, wait, but if you lease it, the whole lease payment is right off of right. it, right? Correct. Is a cash out refinance or home equity loan better? What do you think? Depends on what you want to do. If you know if you got the money to put somewhere right now, you need the goddamn money, you do a cash out. All right. If you're not sure what you're gonna do with the money, especially today's interest rate, because it's very hard to even match the goddamn rate to invest in that you're paying the bank the interest. So, you know, do a home equity line. You sit there, the money's sitting there anytime you want. You make a phone call, hey, I need a hundred grand. They send you a hundred grand, but you're not paying on it, but it's sitting there waiting for you to use. And then you use it when it makes sense to use it. Think of it this way, you know, a cash out refinance comes with a payment tomorrow. A home equity loan, you don't have any payment until you use the money. And it's the easiest know. way to explain it. But it's sitting there, so you still got it, right. but you ain't paying for it. 
All right. Uh, shout out Javier. Thank you for the twenty dollars. Band, great show. I have one question for you. The bank will not do a modification and is trying to foreclose. What should I do? I owe seventy grand and have one hundred and thirty grand in equity, but I can't touch it. S O S. Get you. a fucking lawyer yeah. now. Yeah. That's what you need to do. I was just talking to a guy who paid his fucking mortgage in fucking eighteen months. Okay, and and uh, they're still modifying him. Listen, get a lawyer. If you got that kind of equity in the fucking property, you need to get a fucking lawyer that that, can, that specializes right. in dealing with people in your situation. So seek out a lawyer that that does stuff with banks. Okay, that's what you need to do. Don't waste your time with with no other bullshit. Get a fucking lawyer that knows how to has experience negotiating with banks, and that and once they see a lawyer involved, then their turn ch- ch- changes. You know yeah. why? Because then they need to fucking get a lawyer, and then they got to spend more money, and then they know the lawyer knows every trick he can to tie him up, and all this and that and the other thing. So get a lawyer immediately before they start fucking foreclosing on you. Now's the time you need that fucking lawyer. Wherever you're at, find them. In worst case scenario, sell the house, pull your equity out, move on. That's yeah. an option too. Yeah. You know, if you want to do that, do that. There you go. You got options. You just got to exercise them. <clears throat> All right. Uh, shout out Luca. Thank you also for the twenty dollars. How do I know what cap to underwrite a deal at? Should I be buying based off of cap rate or an ROI? I've been advised not to underwrite based off cash on cash because if because <clears throat> it works lev- levered. Unlevered, sorry. Works levered. Levered. It works unlevered, yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah. Do you agree? <clears throat> yeah. So the market the, the market trades on cap rate, and the market is priced on cap rate. As a broker, we don't factor in IRR because we don't know what your internals are. We don't know how you're going to underwrite the deal. So the market, You don't know what he's borrowing the money at. Yeah, I don't know where you're borrowing the money at. I don't know what your cost of borrowing is. I don't know how much your equities, how much equity you're going to put into the deal. So when I go out and I list a property – we base it 100 entirely percent on on NOI. Um, now that NOI has to make sense. The market has to make sense. And right now we're we're caught in that trap. We're in an inflection to where it used to be that you'd be able to make a spread off of your money and borrow money at four percent and buy a property at a cap rate at a six percent and make that 200 percent or 200 basis point arbitrage spread. Today th- that spread is pretty equal. I mean, even if you can find a property at a six cap. It's still going to cost you six percent in interest on your money, um, so there, there's a lot of moving questions of that or moving uh, issues of that. But the bottom line is the market is based off of, of NOI and based off a of cap rate. But guys like me, we look at ROI. Yep. Why? Because we know what the hell we're going to pay for the money. Whenever Ben underwrites a deal and puts it in front of me, he says, "Okay, he knows what the fuck our interest rate's going to be." All right, and you can fix your interest rate like I should have freaking did back in January, like a <laughs> schmuck I didn't. And I don't want to talk about some. I, I had some fixed rates, and you know, I fucking got rid of them. I'm an idiot. What do you our, want me to tell you? Friends, I just need friends didn't take care of you. I, what? Our friends didn't take care of you. I had money with the big banks at three fucking percent fixed. And then the fuck, and I said, what the fuck am I paying them three for when my adjustable is only uh, a point and a half times 0.25 yeah. LIBOR? I'm paying 175. Why am I pissing away a point and a quarter a month? Why? Now I know why. Because the fucking <laughs> Biden raised the fucking rates up to the roof, and now I'm fucked. But that's, you know, life. You know, I made a bad mistake, and I didn't see a crystal ball. But the point is, I look at what my return is going to be because I know what my interest rate is going to be. And I have to look at it because, uh, like, the cap rates make no sense these days. So right. I got to, if I, you know, it's just it's a mess. But, you know, look at look at both ways. You know, but definitely your return on your investment is what you want to look at because but you got to know what you're going to pay for that money. He can't determine that. The broker yeah. can't determine that. Only you can determine that. You and the bank. Okay, here we go. The last super chat of the night. Jian Yang, thank you for the $2. How long can Ben get an interest-only loans for? You know, that's my personal business. I'm not disclosing that to you. Listen, <laughs> interest-only loans. Everybody loves these interest-only loans. It took me 30 years to get them. All right? The bank's only going to loan me interest-only loans because I proved to the bank that I am no risk. So the more money they loan you, the better it is for them. If I pay principal down, I'm borrowing less money. They make less money. I'm a no-risk buyer. You have to become a no-risk buyer. borrower and then they'll give you interest only they'll give it to people also doing construction jobs right. uh, you know stuff like that to give you time to stabilize the property anybody can get them but you know my term 
goes out typically with the term it runs consistent with the lease of the tenant that I have. Okay, typically in like a Home Depot. If I got 10 years on a Home Depot, I'm going to ask them for 10 years interest only. Why? Because they know damn well Home Depot ain't going nowhere. Yeah. They're going to pay the goddamn rent. Yeah. It's a safe deal. It's all about risk tolerance. You know, that's what interest only is all about. Showing the bank they don't have any fucking risk, so they don't need you to buy down the principal. That's yeah, relationship. You got you to build that relationship <laughs> with the bank over years. I mean, we... You know, we're in the same situation. We can walk in and get three, five year, you know, interest only. But a guy coming in off the street that they don't know you, you're making your first time application. You got to prove to them your ability to get that deal done. That's it. Yeah. Anything There's else? No more super chats. All right, that. folks. I hope you appreciated the fact that John came down here to hang out with us. I really appreciate yeah. it. You better get your ticket. You better get your room. You better zoom. You better be there October fifteenth. Don't let me stand there in a goddamn room by myself. All right. I hope to see you there. Yep. So get online now. BenMal.com slash what? Live, live baby. Live. live. We're going live. Yep. Me, Ben Jr., Aaron, Vincent, Carla, Paulie. Everybody's going to be there. John, you coming? I'm coming. John there will be go. there. We'll you be got there. questions? Hey, a lot of big shots coming to my town. I'm oh, telling yeah, you now. You might it's score a big fat commission coming to my show. Huh? Great. You know? So um, and I'll be John will be there to answer questions and hang out with us. Everybody go like, comment, subscribe, bring tell your, your kid mom, with tell you. your dad, tell everybody about the channel. We're past 500k and now. We're trying to get to a million. A million. Ooh. To a million. A million. That's the big money. That's there. the big money. That's go follow all that his. puts us in the big leagues. Yep, that's the big leagues. That's, everybody go follow his Danny social Duncan media. Money I know. Danny Danny Duncan. Duncan. Right he came here and he fucking <laughs> he rode my goddamn all my toys he played with. He's a nice kid. And he's yeah, actually he's buying cool. real estate. He's yeah. one of the he's real like, estate. I, at first when I met him, I said, Oh boy. And then he showed me I want to do this, I want to do that. I bought he builds fucking duplexes in Inglewood. Really? He's making huh? a killing. He I found some that. contract that is not ripping yeah. him off. He's flipping duplexes and building them, and he wants to do an entertainment place. I mean, he's a smart guy. One of the you know? realest YouTubers that I can think of now. Really cool guy. But, I've heard really good things about him. I've heard a couple people talk about yeah. him. I mean, uh, nobody's going to like everybody. A lot of people don't <laughs> like me. You know what I got to say about that. All right? Enjoy getting in line. But the point is, you better come there October 15th. Yep. I got mortgage payments to make, baby, and you can help me make them. All I ask is you come stay in the hotel. Happy you'll be there. Happy, happy. You got hotel questions? Ask Happy. He's an expert. Brenda will be there. She's an expert. Yep. What Everybody else? Everybody go follow his social media at RealBenMala on Instagram and Twitter. You can I, got, follow I don't got many people on Twitter. Yeah, you don't have a lot of people on Twitter. Know. So they if like you have Twitter, twit. go I'm follow Trump. him. I'm not tweeting um, like Trump. Trump Twitter. Let's see. Everybody go follow did my... Did he get kicked off? I think he did. Did he get let him back yeah. on? I don't know. I don't think so. Now they're coming out talking yeah. about he over-evaluated his real estate. Yeah. I don't want to yeah, talk about Trump. Crazy. Yeah, what a crazy... <laughs> everybody go follow my Instagram at uh, Aaron underscore Mala Life, where Fall even has Instagram. Yeah, it's scoop of 3D. It's called Polak.com. <laughs> All, right. All right. Come on down. We'll see you later. Adios, amigos. Yeah.